Good evening everybody and welcome to another Saturday Shenmue Dojo stream. I'm Matt and with me as always is my dojo fellow co-owner James. Hey guys, how's everyone doing tonight? Thank you all for coming. How's it going James, all right? Um, yeah, all good mate, yeah thanks. Excellent. Uh, yourself? Yeah, all <laughs> good. I've got... I, know, I know you're right because we've just spoken before. <laughs> I've got, got my vodka ready so it's all, it's all good, it's all fine. Oh, it's machine. Got me whiskey ready. So today, everyone, we're going to bash through the rooftop fight and then we're going to sit and go through a nice calming section of Guili and probably finish it off if, if time allows. Um, but before all that, we want to go through a bit of news. So I'm, I'm going to start things off with um, we have a new interview out with Ezra Krabe, who is from <laughs> IGN Japan. Um, I had the privilege of doing about an hour and a half interview with him. We talk about Shenmue 4, we talk about him discovering Shenmue and how it has literally, and I mean I mean this seriously, literally inspired the man's life. It's a really good interview, one of my favourite ones, so catch that. I see James has chucked the um, link in the chat the already for everybody. Chat. Yeah, honestly guys, that is a, probably my favourite um, interview that Matt's done. And uh, Ezra just comes off, it's just insane, some of the stories... If you haven't listened to that particular episode yet, go go uh, check it out because some of the stories Ezra comes up with, like how he's travelled and you know he he lived in he's well he's he's lived in Japan most of his his life now I believe you know at least the last ten or so years and uh, <clears throat> the trip he did to China <laughs> in Guilin and buy, buying the boat and going down you know he's he's literally tried to relive Rio's life. <laughs> yeah, in a he sense, is, he is, get, he get is, the same sort of locations. And... He has lived as Rio, and it's it's a really and Ezra's brilliant, fantastic interview. Mm. He was, oh, was really the, good fun. Becoming a, a martial arts teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so that Just... catch that. Speaking of interviews and, and podcasts, we have episode four of our podcast out. James, did you want to talk about that quickly? Yes. Uh, let me just link it first. So episode four is. Probably my favourite episode of of uh, the podcast as well. Um, so basically, we went through all of the the lingering story elements. I know we're going to do a little bit of that tonight as well, but that's just going to rehash what we spoke about, sort of. Um, but we went through all three games so far. So we talked about Shemfua, about the tree, Shemu trees, about the mirrors. You know, we we literally went through every story element that we haven't actually got an answer for yet, and. Um, just basically just why it needs answering uh you know what that what that particular question was and just all the nitty-gritty details about those story elements and in fact we we we've that's one thing we forgot to mention you know i wanted to talk about um that time chart you got from um, phantomriverstone.com yeah 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 A brilliant brilliant um uh, timeline of it's got like everyone's ages and like where it kind of puts the characters where they were in the games, uh, well, in, in you know in the in the story. So like um, Zhao Suming was in China, you know, nineteen sixty one was it or whatever we, we were talking about, and with with the Wow, and the, you know the timeline there. It's just really interesting. So that's basically where we took that that information from and created a lot of uh, what we spoke about in this particular episode. Uh, which is how we got to um, to know the the characters' ages, really, and uh, obviously that that related to to Ziming. We we spoke about Ziming, how he could potentially be Landy, just how the ages kind of match up. So yeah, guys, so that is a, a great episode. I've I've already linked it. I haven't linked it on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, actually. you've linked it in there. You've linked it in there already. But, so in not, YouTube. Uh, yeah, the YouTube. Uh, I don't know if you put it in YouTube. It's on the it's on the Twitch oh, yeah. chat. I can see it. Retro Godfather's yeah. just said he's missed missed a couple, so he needs to be catching up. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. Do catch up. And obviously, those. I've I've put the the YouTube link in there. Which to to be fair, for episode four of the the podcast, I would recommend the YouTube version just because I spent a lot of time editing together footage to go with what we were talking about. So there's it's... like a lot of context for what we're we're actually discussing. It's bloody good, um, we, actually. James puts a lot of effort into those YouTube videos, and it, I think, it, it, like you say, it provides a real nice context to what we're talking about and a bit of background knowledge. It's really, really good. So yeah, yeah check, thanks, man. But check it out. I mean, if you want to, all all of these the the interviews and the, the podcast episodes you can get over on your podcast provider of choice. So you've got a link 
I'll just link Anchor, which is it's basically where we upload all the podcasts and then they distribute it to all the, the different platforms. Um, but I think there's a, there should be a list of where you can actually download the podcast. But like I say, I'm pretty sure people know where to get podcasts from these days. Yeah. So like if you've got an Apple phone, you know, I, I use Apple Pod, I, I think it's called Apple Podcasts, you know, the, the one that's built into the Apple iPhones. Uh, it's on there. <clears throat> you use Spotify, I think, Matt, don't you? Yeah, I get mine off Spotify, and it's on some other podcast, uh, Pocket Casts and some other podcast providers, but it's pretty much the Dojo podcast is everywhere. You can get it from wherever you need, and if you can't find it, drop us a message or go onto YouTube, you'll catch it all on there. The next bit of news is YouTube-related, actually. Um, last weekend, I don't know if everybody's seen it, we had a video from Sega, Adam Korolik and Corey Marshall, we're describing five tips for new starters for Shenmue. Bit of funny timing because this is a bit bit of left field out of nowhere. But hey, Sega are promoting Shenmue. Let's go with it. Good video. Um, Adam Korolik wrote most of it. Um, I don't know Corey voiced it, and it's a really really good video. So make sure you watch that. And then yes, not yesterday, Thursday. We got a very, very interesting piece of Shenmue merchandise. I don't know what everybody's views are on the Shenmue Ryohazuki <laughs> tubs, <laughs> the rubber duck. But I call it Sh- Shenmue duck. <laughs> Shenmue duck. Ryo Kwakzuki, as I think James referred to him as on our tweet. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that was it, yeah. yeah. Ryo- Shenmue merch, why the hell not? It's a bit different. And I think... It's great. And and like uh, we pointed out as well on the the actual box for the the tub, there's a number that says number one, so it's it's number one in a series. So hopefully they're going to go uh, release a few more characters. You know, yeah, I'm interested true. to see what people think. What characters would they like to see as a duck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously you got the Rio one. I think like Landy's a given, really, isn't it? You'd hope so, Landy. Um, I'd want Ren. That'd be really funny. Ren. Oh, Ren would be cool and Shenfoi. But there would be, there'd be there's so many good characters that they could do, you know, as a duck. Like just obscure characters that maybe probably I don't know. Sega is fully invested in the the backlog of characters, as, as it were. Yeah. But I mean, when we got Sega Heroes, the the had Tom, didn't they? Was it? It was Rio, Tom, Shenfar, and was it Ren? It was Ren. Ren. It, it was, was Ren. Ren. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I think Tom is quite a character that they could do yeah you know, dreadlocks yeah. dreadlocks on the duck <laughs> why not why know. not we'll see anyway it's an interesting piece of merch uh retro godfather loves it excellent i'm just going to say hello to everybody very quickly uh william thank you on twitch for joining us ginger fairy thank you for joining us i can see michael mm-hmm. and strictly sega europe and retro godfather over on youtube so again thank you for dropping in and being with us this evening we're going to go Probably a good two and a half, three hours, I would have thought. So yeah, sounds we're, good, man. we're going to crack on and get the volumes up. And we're going how to. Are, how is the, the audio, by the way, guys? Is everyone hear me? Hear Matt? Hear the game okay? It's you levels or. All... Should be able to hear the game in a minute. Let me know if it's a little bit quiet. But we should be okay. Right, so we're going to bang straight into the rooftop fight before we head to Guilin. Yeah, the duck's great. <laughs> yeah, the duck is. I, awesome. I, lo- I love these little little wacky. I'm going. It's just nice to see some actual merch from Sega, anyway. There. To be honest, in general, because yeah. obviously we're going to get Shenmue Three merch from Wisenet or you say. know, uh, limited run games, or whatever we get them in the big collector's edition, okay. and the vinyl records. And young does yeah, but it's just nice to see some actual Sega products. It is. It's nice. Yeah. And... Just shows that it's still in the thoughts a little bit. It begs the interesting question. I don't know if everybody saw the slide that was going around Twitter. I think it was yesterday with Sega mm. looking at old IPs and Shenmue wasn't on there. I, I mean, I suppose... It was funny, though. That that was the same day, one to two in the morning. People were saying, like, oh, Shenmue's not on the list. Sega have forgotten about Shenmue. And then, you know, come the afternoon, we've got a Ryo Hazuki duck. <laughs> it's interesting, is it? I mean, I... I suppose the thing is, they put Shenmue on that on that slide. Everybody loses their shit. Sega Shenmue, Sega Shenmue. I just wonder if there's expectation management in there. Possibly, I don't. I don't know. Um, Sliver of Sand. That's it. Yeah. Good to see, by the I, way. I agree with that. 
No, I, I agree with that point, man, because they're not going to list all these games, are they? Because then that just kind of creates a false... Um, well, not hype, but like a false sense of this is what they're, they're thinking of kind of thing. And especially if they put Shamu in there, then you're thinking, oh, you know, Sega part of Shamu 4, you, you know what I mean? People start doing wild theories and that sort of stuff, don't they? Yeah, they will. So I think the it's, there might be some expectation management there. There's so many games. They don't games. really want to, to potentially, I know it would just be a graphic and saying that this is an example of things that we want to do. But it's kind of a semi-promise at the same time because people are reading that list and they're thinking like, oh, you know, we might see another Crazy Taxi game, we might see another Space Channel 5 game. If Shemu's in that list, it would be, it would be a news point, it'd be like, you know, what's Sega thinking? News, wouldn't it? It'd be massive, massive news if Sega, Sega came back on board with Shenmue. I mean, you look at all those IPs like Jet Set Radio, Crazy Taxi, it's... um. They're so, they have so many good games sat there that, I, I don't know, they've just been dormant for too long. It's weird, isn't it? It's a, those are like, like when they do the the Sega All-Stars, they consider them to be like, All-Stars are their brand. And for them to deviate from that and not even get like a, a Jet Set Radio game since, you know, the original Xbox. It's just crazy, isn't it? It's weird. I mean, hopefully... They know, they know, like, Jet Set Radio and Beat, in particular, that character is quite heavy out there. You know, they, they've had T-shirts and merch on insert coin clothing. They've had that on the Sega shop themselves. You know, they, they see... Um, what's his name on... Um, I forgot his name all of a sudden. It, um, Hideo? Hideo Nagamura or something? The, the guy that composed... The, yeah, the music yeah, yeah. you see him tweeting all the time. Um, these you know these fans tweeting about Jet Set Radio probably as much as Shemu perhaps. Um, it's just another one of those weird things. And then you've got the the bomb funk game that's coming out. You know yes. it's kind of like Sega Sega's waited a little bit too long and someone's <laughs> took the opportunity to do it themselves. Well yeah I mean why not I mean you've got I, I, I know Taxi is it Taxi Chaos has got a bit of a mixed reception but again it's yeah. like well. People have just gone sod it, I'm gonna do it myself. Mm -hmm. there's, there's so That's many, it. And so many good IPs sat there. Be I've got everything crossed at Sega are going let's go in all in this. I mean we've got I'd love a virtual fighter six. I, I think I've robbed man. I mean, I don't really know what's going on with this esports title, but like the word on the street away <laughs> that people seem to think it's just Virtual Fighter Five again, isn't it? Yeah, it just sort of souped up for the yeah. current gen, when I say current gen. Which yes, at least is something, you know, it, you know, it's, if they see, if that performs quite well, I suppose, you know, it could just be a stopgap. You don't really know what's going on at Sega, really. I mean, we've always questioned some of the, the choices that they've done, but for all we know, they could be having a Virtua Fighter 6 that's in the works and think like, you know, let's bang out Virtua Fighter 5 Esports Edition or whatever, just to fill the void and get the, the series' name back out there, but I don't know. No, I don't know. I mean, I just hope that it takes off, because Virtua Fighter is critical to gaming as a whole, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's the basis of this fighting system I'm using right now. Yeah, and it's one of the first 3D fighter, you know, it's there's a lot of history and a lot of Sega titles, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> it's easy enough to say it's the first 3D fighter, but if you think about it, like games like Jet Set Radio, could that was that not the first bloody roller skating graffiti game? <laughs> it was. Was was Space Channel Five not the first? Uh, you know, it's just wacky all... space. <laughs> They've got all this unique, game. all these unique no, IPs dodge. out there that I think we Don't could really. That I think in the modern market would work. I really do, especially mm. some of this more arcadey stuff which is taken off. I think the problem is it's like the the volume of sales that the, they're always worried about, aren't they? Like Yakuza now is a bit of a flagship title. They know they can bang out a Yakuza game and it'll get probably get like a couple of million sales, won't it? Like I'm I'm not really the one to talk about sales and figures and stuff, but you know for a fact that Yakuza is going to be more successful than them. Whacking out a new Super Monkey Ball, or something, you know what I mean? But to keep Sega and the brand 
in good faith with its fans. You know, they do need to, to dip their toes into these other franchises. Well, yeah, because then as well, it, it, it will bring other people into the Yakuza series, and hopefully, you know, and I know Yakuza 7 has been their most successful title out of the series so far, so it's clearly got momentum behind it. Yeah, and I will say, actually, this is going back a couple of years now, so maybe, maybe Sega a little bit more... Uh, I don't know, maybe people are a bit more aware of Sega, but going back a couple of years, I remember going to one of my Japanese lessons, and I was talking about Shenmue, and I mentioned Sega, and they're like, Sega, is that still a thing? You know, <laughs> these, these people out there, that because Sega's not really at the forefront of gaming, you know, like it was back in the day, you know, people don't really... I think they're just out of touch with a lot of things like that. You see PlayStation, Xbox. Um, I think getting those games back is a real nostalgia kick for a lot of people. It will be, and I just... Like you say, like a Virtua Fighter 6, that's going to open eyes, isn't it? That's like, oh, you know, I played, played Virtua Fighter on the Sega Saturn, or, the, you know, Dreamcast or whatever. Whereas if they release like, I think they've got like a Total War game that's coming out. What should I, do? I mean, maybe that's just me, but I don't think of that as Sega when that's released and all these news or whatever of Total War. And I bet there's a lot of people that are, pick up the, the Football Manager game or Total War or whatever. And uh, they don't actually associate Sega with it. Funny, that, that could just be me. Yeah, no, I, I think it's classic, <laughs> like, current Sega is, um, I don't know, they, they publish a lot, don't they? They're known for Yakuza and a few other titles, but I think it'd be good for them to go back to those to those old IPs. So Yakuza, I think now that's a bit more popular. I think that could do, uh, that, that probably has made people aware of Sega, the company, again. Uh, by the way, I was just... Hello, Paddy. I, I don't know. <laughs> You're right, Paddy. <laughs> um, 99 Nights as well in Twitch. Nice to see yeah, you. Yeah, and we've got a lot of messages on YouTube. Let's catch up with some of the stuff. Uh, so, Retro Godfather about the ducks. We were talking about the ducks. You'd like to see Ren, Shenfar, and obviously Landy. So, I think those are like the four with the most chance of becoming a duck, I would say. That'd be good as well. Um, I remember the, the lighting and the reflection of this tower here. Yeah. The, the sunset here, just how when Rio comes up the stairs and it's purple or orange or whatever, and then it, it goes purple, uh, a bit more purple and dark. Look at the clouds, mate. It's fucking hell. Badass. Isn't it? it's, well, it still is. It? Like, this is one of the most. Like, I remember it's crazy, this. actually, that. Look at the... I remember playing. I don't know who's kid, in front here. And you sat there, like, going, fucking hell, he's, he's buggering off on a helicopter. I don't know. This is, for me, it's one of the best scenes in gaming ever. It really is. Yeah. Well, when I was just talking about the sky, then I just looked at the clouds, and I don't remember them looking so He's good, to gone. be honest. Is that dark, rainy cloud Yo. over there? Yo. No, it's... Um, sorry, so... That's awesome that Sega is still supporting Shamu, yeah? Yeah. You are so right, the amount of dormant Sega IPs is unreal. Virtual Fight 6 would be awesome to see. In my opinion, Sega were the most innovative company out there, full of fresh ideas with their games. They were not scared to try new ideas. I think that's where a lot of you know people like us have got their. I've got to fuck this word up. Affiliation, affinity, affinity. Yeah. You know yeah, what's yeah. what's the word I'm trying to say there? Affinity. Or turn it into a nation word. What's that word? But it is affiliation, affinity, whatever you want to use. I mean, association <laughs> with it. It's just, it's yeah. Sega yeah. were innovative. They they they. They just thought outside the box, which is why we love them so much. And I think. Mm. Oh! Sorry, Matt, carry on, mate. Sorry. I think in Keep re re recent years, so they've almost I followed the gaming market. The they've, they've been less risky. They've not How thought outside the box. I just love to see them be. think outside well, the box. Well, they've done some, some real shrewd business work, really, but, you know, the PC side with the football yeah, manager games and you. that sort of stuff. I bet that's bringing a. Mm -hmm. A massive income, Vengeance. and obviously they did have that little Vengeance. mishap with that 30 million mobile game, whatever. But Avenging generally, the, the stuff father. that they've done on mobile has brought in a lot of income as well. I would have thought. 30 million um, pound, or 30 million dollars on a mobile game. <laughs> apart from that one, which yeah, bombed um, massively. Oh, I was just going to say, Michael, Michael made a good point there. They're talking about a super game. Remember that. Mm. What could you think that would be? The that name. 
you know, the work up to a sip. Was it five years from now? Yeah, they reckon there's a European studio working on like some first person shooter through Sega, but I, I don't know what it is. Or, but I mean, I'd love is that, that a super game though. I, well, I assumed it was, but I could be completely wrong, I could have misinterpreted it. That can't be true. Because who did the Alien Isolation game? Was that a European studio? I think so. I don't creative Assembly or something like that? Happened. It might have been. Oh no, it was was it Gearbox? But I do know that Su Ming Tao died. And that Iwao brought Zhao Oh, Creative Assembly, yeah. Okay. So, let's see where they're based. Because I'm thinking, I can, I can imagine a sequel to that, because that did pretty well. Su Ming Zhao was British, my best British game friend. developer. If he had lived, he would have become a parent company Sega Sega Europe. So, yes, I think Sega bought them. My could, had could be something like that. Mm. Well, this... It could be like an Alien Isolation 2, which wouldn't, in my eyes, that wouldn't be the super oh, game. Is... When when the, you got the word There's super, no just think of like the, the really trying to, and, and that graphic that, that mentioned that as well as so the, the old, old Sega IP. I don't know. So... Just make your mind wonder a little bit. Oh, here we go. Just sort of going on to Shenmue stories. a little bit. We <laughs> talked about this about in our podcast, right, yeah. didn't we? What the hell is this? Which, uh, which was really when interesting when we were doing the research for, for this bit the of the podcast. The two for and the light shows. Which screen to use? Yes. Keeps lagging. A key to the uh, treasures hidden away in order to revive the Jing Dynasty. Hmm. <laughs> See, I did think, I, I mentioned this to you the other day, I don't know what other people think about this, but this is something I've thought about since the podcast. Um, I was thinking about the keys. So, you know how we we already know Landy's the dragon. Yeah. Uh, Niao Sun's the phoenix. We don't know who the white tiger is. No. But I did mention to you, it just something just clicked in my head, I was thinking like, Zhang, who's Yuanda Zhu's associate, gives Ryo the snake tortoise key, which is one of the four heavenly beasts. So I'm thinking, is there some sort of significance to him actually giving that particular key compared to the other three? And then I was thinking, because obviously Zhang works for Yuanda Zhu, and there's those like those little theories about Yuanda Zhu being a bit of a... He, he could potentially be a bad guy, for all we know. I mean, he comes across as a decent dude here, but is he... As he leaves, because <laughs> we wouldn't we wouldn't actually know that, would we? And Zhang gives Rio that that particular key. That light show there is also the Big Dipper, which is representative of the dragon. the dragon. So we did talk about that in the podcast that the, the we we assume that the the dragon mirror would show the Casanopia formation of stars, uh, which is in the shape of a phoenix. So that that links the mirrors then, doesn't it? Really. There is a place where and when we got into the star the mythology and all that sort of stuff, down. it's really cool how they keep mentioning the North Star, mm. and the North Star is like literally in the middle of both of these star formations. So in my head, that, that's saying that's where the treasure is. The descendants of the one who made the mirrors. They may have already mentioned that in the game. <laughs> Ginger Fairies just popped up on Twitch uh, when you mentioned the possibility of Zooming being Landy. I believe that Zooming knows a lot more than she let on about Landy. When you spar with her at Mamma uh, and she goes to pressure points and she Landy said, has You were the man England. you sought revenge on, you'd already be dead. It's an interesting point because yeah. she does know the name and she also m mentions that Landy later on shows no mercy. So she must mm, know who he is. She must know who he is, if not. You know. If she knows who he is, does she just know about the name and like folklore, or do you think like she is hiding something about her brother? Because when when do we think she's last heard of her brother? Was it literally when Ziming walked away? No, that was the last no. contact she's ever had with him. Yeah. I think that's that's what's implied, isn't it? That when he left, that was the last she saw. So she doesn't her. actually know then. If that's yeah. if that's the case, yeah, she doesn't actually know what's happened high. to him. So she doesn't know if he's turned to the you dark side. Really <laughs> no, she hasn't got a clue. As such, he, he just appeared like he was going to because he's going to go off and join the Chia or whatever and get revenge. From is what he told her. Coin. So you know maybe she just assumes like he, that's what's happened. And then she's heard about a man called Landy, who's a bit of a nasty bastard. <laughs> and that's just how she knows about Landy. But maybe she's not made the connection like 
Ren. That could be my brother. I don't know. Ren got you again. Interesting. It'd be nice to know. I'll keep Hopefully, we get to that stage <laughs> at some point. So, well, hopefully so. There's so many questions that we have to be answered. I mean, Addy says that this ending puts Shamu three to shame. It's not actually the end in the game. Though. That's <laughs> that's the good thing, isn't it? You know, you've got this amazing ending just to this one chapter here, and then you've got an even would you say an even better ending, mm. which we'll get to it. It's, at the end it's of the funny, stream. isn't it? The ending of, of Shenmue 2, and I presume everybody in chat's played the game, so they know what we're going to be talking about. But yeah, the whole wheeling nice, section nice is it's, um, such a change of pace. I remember playing it at 14, and I didn't appreciate it until I was a lot older, sort of 19, 20. Yeah, I think I. He's gone. Like my memory's not the best, but I just remember just loving it back in the day. Goodbye. I even made, you know how Rio's got a notebook, I even yeah. wrote out his notes and I even did a page on, so some of the things that Shenfua says about, you know, um, she could tell when the, the wind shifts or something it's going to start raining. I even wrote mm -hmm. some of these facts down just for the sake of it, just as a, you know, you just as a child and you... You've got a, a broad imagination as a kid, kind of thing. So I was writing down, you know, if you see, um, don't don't stick your arms out in long grass because mm. there could be a snake in there, kind of thing. Um, this is getting interesting. Strictly so saying, yes, Paddy, Paddy I've just says, turned myself up a tiny bit. Let me know if it's loud enough. Uh, Paddy says that blew my mind that this wasn't the end of the first playthrough. When yeah. this boat pulled up in Guila and I was thinking how this game's still going. But it depends, Paddy, but how did you play the game, mate? Did you play it on Dreamcast? Because you know you've got a fourth disc. Valid point. Oh. What did you say? That was the pass passport disc. <laughs> hey, Johnny Wolfhart from Shenmue D. Nice to see you. How's it going? I don't know where to look, mate. Oh, Paddy, I can't on stream Xbox. and stuff. Oh. Ooh. Okay, so you wouldn't have. That's interesting. Cause yeah, because on Dreamcast, obviously you had the four discs, as you say, so it was like an assumption yeah. that you would just... Oh shit, I forgot See, that, 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 that would have been a good... Uh, bollocks, hmm? sorry, I forgot I did the birthday quest for this. Oh, did you do the birthday quest? Yeah, I did no, the birthday quest That's on this cool. playthrough, I forgot. <laughs> if anyone, oh, everyone's... It's a welcome. People might not have seen this, this, this is the true ending. Fung <laughs> me. This is sick, mate. I completely I haven't forgot. seen this for ages. No, I haven't. I completely forgot I even did. See, she's so she's, what, she's she's wearing the brooch and she yeah. looks a bit sad. Oh dear. What she say? You kept your promise. You came to see me again. No. One second. I've got to keep my word. Your word. You forgot? I told you, didn't I? That I wouldn't cry. But Ginger Fairy's never seen the scene. Smiling. Yeah. You did. <laughs> yeah. So I'll be fine. I'll be okay. Does she say that? And keep she smiling. Bloody she condensation off my vodka bottle. It's like made my window sill really wet. Well. Goodbye, Dio. Okay. <laughs> so fuck's yeah. Sake. yeah. I forgot I did this scene, you know. It's really good, man. It is really good. It's a lovely scene. Like it's. Hmm. A bit of I mean, it's implied that Fang Mei's got a crush, basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, implied, it's sort of, it's heavily. <laughs> heavily implied, yeah. He doesn't help himself, though, by, like, <laughs> getting her in the, the brooch and all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's standard rear Hazuki, isn't it? He doesn't understand what he's doing with women. Come on. Is, is that the scene, then? I've, yeah, that's the that's scene. The, the second scene, though, isn't it? There's, 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 oh yeah, there's the other scene where you ha actually give her the brooch on her birthday. Mm. Mm. I'm glad you had that, man. That's cool. I, I was digging. I, I forgot, and then because mm. I've got the like birthday a... events. I think it's worth doing. It's, it's, it's really difficult to do uh, from memory. Because you have to do it. It's very you have to time you, mm. you play through, really, don't you? So, because a birthday's on the third of March, which I remember because my wife's birthday's the same day. Um, 
you have to kind of time it like a few days before the birthday just so you've got enough time to get her to call you Ryo, I think. Yeah, you, right? you have to keep talking to her and then she stops calling you Hazuki san because that's calling you Ryo and then it all, all changes, doesn't it? Nigel, yeah. Nigel on YouTube, nice to see you. Welcome, dude. He says, I loved Guilin when younger. The nature setting really appealed when stuck in suburban life. But I admit I grew a little impatient with the forced dialogue these days. I suppose it depends how many times you've played through it. Yeah. Um, I think it is such a such a change of pace. Um, what would you what would you say you prefer from Shenmue so far? Then would you say you prefer the the city style, like the density, the shops, and all that sort of stuff, or have you preferred, you know, the, the Guilin chapter, the quieter chapter? Oh, that's a question. I mean, I've always been... Because obviously that would span into Shenmue 3 as well. I've always liked the, the more city scenes. City, you know, city yeah. landscapes for Shenmue. But actually, Bailu Village is one of my favourite settings for Shenmue out, out of all mm. three games. That's why I asked you. I was thinking it's you've funny. said that before. Yeah. It's funny that... Demon's maybe Bailu has a bit of... Um, Demon's Triangle a bit of nostalgia because we waited so long for it yeah and it was like mm. this is Shemu 3 you know it's exciting again it's a new game that's kind of stuck with you mm. <clears throat> just looking at the chat again do we know anything about Landy's parents no we don't only that his father was was killed killed and yeah. that Landy was taken in by the Chiu men that's all we know we don't know how we he kind died. of know a little bit more about his dad, don't we? We know that his dad was given possession of the mirrors. Yeah, they, was, they were entrusted uh, to him. Entrusted to him—that was the word. Yeah, and obviously they they trained and prayed in Bailey Village, mm. and then one day they suddenly stopped showing up, and then that's all we know really about his dad. Yeah, it's, there's not a lot. I think Shen moved forward. Hopefully, you are hopefully reveal yes. more. Uh, Sliver of Sand, Guilin. another thing about the stars, the Big Dipper has seven stars, which could also be related to the Sword of Seven Stars that Shen Ha's father puts in the... Yeah, this is something yeah. we, we've, we've talked about, James, isn't it? That it all yeah. it all links together quite nicely. So yeah, absolutely, I would say so. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure actually that when you've got those seven stars in the sword, I think that is in relation to the Big Dipper. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And obviously that was the theme of Shemu 2, especially like the obviously the ending of the game. But that's a lot <laughs> really dumbed down in Shemu 3, so whether that's it's, it's hard to know what is and what isn't a factor anymore. With them kind of retconning the the sword in a way. I mean, I know they didn't actually retcon it, it's in the game, but it's a dagger. And you don't see the floating sword, you don't you don't see it in that intro scene. Mm. It's literally that one scene in the Bell Tower, isn't it, where he puts it in the thing and then it's gone. Yeah, so it's it's difficult to know what kind of uh, you know these plot points they're actually sticking to these days. I mean, speaking of plot points, that amulet, that amulet has to be in in Shenmue Four because Rio's carrying it still. So it's going to have to surely yeah. it would have to bear some relevance to the story going forward. Yeah. I don't wish you to follow the same so, path which... as my brother. In that case, he's got, still got it in his inventory. We're going to see Shuming again, himself. basically. We're going to see Zimming at some point. I don't want you to follow such a path. Um, and like we spoke about in the podcast, you know, how are we going to meet Zimming? Is is Ria going to notice this guy and then notice that he's I got the other half of the pendant? And you know, he's he's maybe they have a conversation. Even you know, they could have a you fight, and then at the end, his how pendant falls out or something. And Rio says, you know. I won't die. Are you Zimming? You know, he, he could even ask that question. Well. Are you Zimming? Because he sees the other half of the pendant and the guy's like, how do you know my name? <laughs> it's, very, it's possible, isn't it? It'd be... They could introduce that in so many good ways. There's there's a good scope there for how they introduce him and how it would work. So it's exciting, actually, when you think about the story that that is to come, as long as they execute it. Just look at the chat again. Um... Strictly say Europe, like the first game the most, it's like coming home. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, it is like coming home. Um, I move my camera because 
I've noticed on the YouTube and the other things. I'm just looking to the right. <laughs> uh, Ginger fairies, the possibility of Landy being zooming. Well, I mean, I think the theory was disproven, but it was something we talked about in the podcast. Michael, um, yeah, the thing the... is, the thing with zooming and Landy is, we've just got that one interview where Yu Suzuki apparently has said that they're not the same character, but like we spoke about in the podcast, uh, it made me chuckle actually when I, I, I reared myself saying it, but could you Suzuki just be saying that because I think it was David DeVille that did the interview, could he be thinking like how you've spoiled the end of my whole game here, yeah, he's <laughs> you know, you've, asked, you've asked me a question, yeah you've, you've asked me a question that's literally in my head is the very final scene of Shenmue 6, so he's thinking that's not going to happen, no. Um, you know what I mean? Zimming is Landy. <laughs> He's just said that as a, as a way to throw us all off the scent. Uh, we've got until we get there, and then it's a surprise. Then Michael on on, on YouTube would love Shenmue Three and Dreamcast graphics. I'd have loved it had it happened at the time. I think I remember talking to Cedric, and he said he oh, said to me that to, to do it on the Dreamcast I engine would have cost really them more agreed. money. Than it would through Unreal because you'd have to train everybody up to use an old engine. There's not the support there anymore, so it's a shame. But yeah, it's. I can see your point. I get. I get where you're coming from. But they're not gonna. Then... I mean, the the fans obviously are gonna want that because we all played the originals on the Dreamcast. Ginger Fairy on on Twitter, the amulet must be used to prove that Rio is a friend and not a foe. Yeah, it could work. It, that that is one way it could go. Abs good, yeah. Absolutely yeah. could go that way. And I would like. There's a, one popular theory on the forums is actually Zimming trains Rio. So that that could play a part. That that amulet could play a part in that. It, there's so many sort of possibilities of how it can happen. But I. What they, what actually I don't envy is is them doing it justice because we've built this up for years and years and years and years. So for them to go and do it justice, they've got a hell of a task on their hand, I think. It's not as bad. <laughs> the thing is, though, Paddy, if Landy is zimming and someone asks you the question, you know. Who is Zimming? Is he? Could he be Landy? And Yu Suzuki's thinking like, if I say if I say no to that, then no, no. If I if I say yes to that, he could have spoiled a major plot point. If he says no, no, no answer, I can't answer that. Then that would imply that Landy is Zimming. So he, the only thing he could say to throw us off that the track for that, if that's like a, a shock moment, a surprise, is no. The, you know, uh, or, or yes, uh, what am I trying to say here? Uh, no, Zimming isn't Landy, do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, I know. So, yeah, you're not gonna basically, you're not, you're not gonna spoil a major plot point, even if he's gone and like called you out on it. You gotta play, you yeah. gotta play the idiot almost and go, no, this is not this. Yeah, because the, the if he says yes, then we know a major plot point, which he wouldn't want to do. If he says, I can't answer that. That implies that he's, he's saying yes, which he can't say. So he's got to say no. Do you know what I mean? Bear with me two seconds, in, guys. Uh, or uh, any scenario, if, if Simming is Landy, he's got to say no, otherwise he gives it away. If Simming isn't Landy, he said no. You know, we're none the wiser, really, are we? Or, or you know, he's, that, that's disproven. I don't know. It's a difficult one. Yeah. Um, I, a lot, a lot of times, like maybe that—that's why now he vets his interviews because he was asked that particular question, <laughs> <laughs> and you know he, he, he kind of, it, you know, it threw him off. He didn't know how to reply, no. and he gave a lot, of, you know, and in, in theory he gave a lot away in that interview, didn't he? I know. I was thinking about this the other day actually. How he's, he's I think, I'll have to read the interview again, but if he's he's named the four bosses or whatever, these four big bosses as like Entai, uh, Tentai, Gentai, you know, all these bloody Thai names, which I was thinking, those aren't the actual character names, so they could be anyone that we've already encountered. You know, you've got Niao Sun, that's the Phoenix, 
who is Entai, which if anyone knows Pokemon, which Paddy knows Pokemon, Entai I think is like the, the Fire Phoenix Pokemon. So he's literally just naming those sort of beasts. I bet, I bet. Like it's, I don't know what the the, tran the translations of the others are, but it leaves, it leaves ten open. ties. It leaves it open to interpretation, doesn't it? Because we could have met these people. We don't know. Exactly, but, exactly. So, so for you know, I know people talk about uh, ten tie. I've seen that. I've seen that name quite a lot, anyway. But ten tie could just be, like I said, you and the zoo. For all we know. Yeah, we, we you, just you, don't. He could be the snake tortoise, big boss kind of thing, and. Ash catching us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now he's got to catch them all. Uh, sure. If if we get Shenmue four, and then like they do the end, yeah, Shenmue four or five, we get the ending. If someone mods Ash, Ash Ketchum as Landy, I will as per Landy. I will personally <laughs> buy you a beer. <laughs> that'd be quite. Funny. That's it. Yeah. The the anti is the fire dog in Pokemon. So I know we've got. And tie. So so I'm thinking the tie bit, I wonder if that's beast. You know how we've got four heavenly beasts? Yeah, possibly. possibly. The, all, the all end and tie. I'm thinking that could be beast. So we've got the fire beast. I don't I don't know what these translate as. Maybe no, someone I... else does. Just looking at the chat again, um we've got uh who's got Michael on, on, on YouTube. What about the anime? could come in and change the story and potentially spoil the this actually you raise a point michael about the anime itself and shen me potentially shen me for i if the anime is good i mean we don't know and it's been put back to 2022 for anybody who doesn't know unfortunately but you know i'd rather it was ready than rushed yeah yeah but say like you get a second season, you get a third season, it starts taking off and it's good. I'd love the anime writers because they'd have got engrossed in Shenmue, they got engrossed in the story. Bearing in mind they're experienced you know, script story writers here, working mm -hmm. with the source material. If it's good, get them on board for Shenmue 4. Because we, all, and I don't want to sound harsh towards Shenmue 3 because I really enjoyed it. But we all, whether you like Shenmue 3 or you didn't, the, the common theme here is that the Shenmue 3 story was lacking. So you can address that quite easily by guessing, if the anime is good, getting those people in to do it. Um, Davison on Cavalli on YouTube as well. Welcome, my friend. Nice to see you. Hey, what, man? How's it going? Yeah, I mean, I agree with that, mate. The anime, it's got a good opportunity here. And it's, like I was saying, I don't know if I said it in a podcast, but I was just mentioned it to you. Animes are story. Do you know what I mean? There's no yeah. gameplay elements, so they have to write a good story to keep the viewer engrossed into the show. So we are going to get 13 episodes of a story-driven anime. So if that does do successfully, and you know people on Adult Swim or whatever um, Crunchyroll tune in, and there's enough enough viewership to like carry into a second season. Ultimately, they've got to put a lot of story and, and writing into the, the, the episodes, really, haven't they, to, to maintain the series there. So if they are going to focus on Shenmue 1 and part of Shenmue 2 for Season 1, Season 2 is introduced, and we're going to get the rest of uh, Shenmue 2, most likely. I'd better hurry. And probably the start or all of Shenmue 3, because, you know, let's face it, there wasn't much story in Shenmue 3, so they probably could... Well, that, that is if they are just going to focus on what happens in the games. I mean, they could then give us more story for yeah. Shenmue 3, really. In the, the episodes, they could talk about, you know, those characters that we didn't get much background on or, you know, much interaction with the characters in Niawu, especially like Shilling or whatever her name is. Yeah, the Shrine um, Maiden. Oh. Grandmaster Feng, the fat guy. Those. <laughs> Master <laughs> Zhu, is that his name? Yeah, Master Zhu, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so they could spend more time in an, an episode-based series there, introducing those characters more, you know, fleshing them out more. In fact, I'm more excited about that in a way, at the moment, of them potentially fleshing out Shenmue 3 more, and Shenmue 3's story more, fleshing it out more, in 
the show. Obviously, I'd rather the Shenmue 4 end up being the game, obviously. You don't want to, like, say, we're going to finish it off in an anime, which, to be fair, I can't see that ever happening. I think they're on track to, to continue the series with the Shenmue 4. Um, but I'm quite excited, actually, for the Shenmue 3 elements of the anime. Once we get to there, that's season 2, season 3, or whatever. Um, so I, I would like that world to be fleshed out more than what we got. I think they could. I could really do think they could flesh it out more. And like, also, you consider Bailey Village in the anime. I'm, I'm thinking well ahead here. Obviously, Bailey Village in, in Shenmue Three is a bit more modern than I think we all anticipated. To, and that's yeah, I'd, I'd be yeah, if anybody disagrees with me, what shove it in the on? chat. But I, I expected it to be more rudimentary. I expected it to be more, yeah, I said more basic. Go, no, if I do, um, so they could they could go back to that route, those routes, and make it a bit more basic, make it a bit more rudimentary. So it has that rustic sort of feel to it that I don't think it quite had in Shenmue 3. I love Bailu Village, yeah. but I think had we got Bailu Village immediately after Shenmue 2... Yeah. I... I um I think it would have been a lot more basic. Um just looking at chat again quickly. Uh have you got any drop frames or is it I haven't, but I can always It could be because we're we're trialing ten eighty P aren't we? Yeah, I'm trialing ten eighty thirty FPS. But guys if it's a major problem right? on the stream, I can happily stop it, yeah. drop it to seven twenty. The little deer. Don't be afraid to tell us yeah, if, you, if, you, if it's not like there's a few people lagging, and yeah. you think it's yourself. Just tell us anyway. Yeah, but if it's if it's if you think it's on my end, then then tell me, and I'll, I'll drop the stream oh, quickly. So drop glad. us back in. I know, I know from my end, man. Um, I, I've stopped watching the the screen share because that was lagging. So I'm that. watching Twitch now. Are you okay? Um. But then again, I haven't got any sound, so I don't know if these are audio <laughs> lagging. I'm just in between the chats and, and whatnot, so I haven't noticed I any particular stream it. lag. Huh. But I have noticed that the, so the screen share is lagging. Yeah, well, it see. was. It's not at the moment. A guardian? A white deer? White. Oh, yeah, it could, it could do. I mean, I, mean, I hope it... I, I, think, I think more people... Blue. I was going to say, I think more people would be talking about it if it was lacking. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, guys, if there, if there is a problem, it, is if there is a problem with the stream and it is lagging for you across the whole chat, YouTube, Twitch, let me know and I'll you. cut it out for a minute, drop it down to 720, and it should then hopefully correct it. I'm just, I want you to try it out tonight as a um. Hazuki. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Why not? But yeah, any problems, let me know. Um, Michael in on YouTube, the anime might finish us through before the games. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out, but I would hope it didn't. I don't, th I don't think they would allow it to. I think if they're, they're in the progress of, or the process of I... creating the game, You're not from here, are you? Shenmue is a game, no. isn't it, really, at the end of the I day? It's always Japan. been a game. Japan? I, I can't see them it's an island country. potentially it's spoiling the end of the game, the or end of the, the Shenmue saga or whatever while they're in the process of making the game, if that makes sense. I don't I, Japan is pretty small compared to China. Is it far from I think here? they would probably just well, space them out more. So if they far. are working on Shemu 4, maybe there's a bit of a, 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 a timeline east. plan that they've What's got wrong? in place oh, where this uh what's his name? Chikara Sakurai guy or whatever, the the actual creator of the anime. Or the director of the village. It's a small um, village in the mountains. If he's doing season one at the moment and he's focusing on Shemu 1's story and a little bit of Shemu 2, I think they must have a good idea of the general consensus of the whole series, like, you know, uh, if the pitch in Shemu 4, whatever, I know, we don't know how far gone Shemu 4 is in development, they could have just, they, they, they could have made stuff while they were making Shemu 3, and that's what they're using for... The two of us Shenmue 4's pitch kind of thing, maybe they souped up the graphics or whatever and you know, fixed a few problems that we didn't get in Shenmue 3. Yes. Um, maybe that's what they're pitching. But I'm pretty sure they must have some sort of game plan in regards to anime and game. You'd hope, you'd hope, you'd hope the game would finish the story first 
and then the anime would be the the adaptation. You'd hope so. I think that's what most people would be going for. I I I am I'd be disappointed if the anime finished it, but if it had to finish it, I I'm behind it. I will take it. Of course, I will, because it's more Shenmue content at the end of the day. And sort of going into that, Retro Godfather's just made a point on YouTube. Do you think the anime will get a DVD or Blu-ray release? Um, I think they'd be crazy not to, quite frankly, because Shenmue yeah, fans lap up merchandise like it's going out of fashion. Yeah, they could stick it on a disc and it'd sell. So. Yeah, I'd be all over that in in a in a heartbeat. Uh, Michael on YouTube, is anyone disappointed in the lack of Sega references in Shenmue 3, like the arcade toys and so on? Um, yes. They couldn't really do it though, could they? I don't think. Were they allowed to? They'd have had to have licensed it out, and the problem with that is licensing costs money. And when they haven't got a big budget anyway, so tell me if you're tired. What do you do? So slowly. To be fair, I was surprised to actually see the Sega logos on the capsule toy machines in the first place. And you get the Astro City um, cabinets, don't you? Oh yeah, 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 in the arcades, yeah. I know they don't. Or they, they play for the Chobuchan games, don't they? The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, that's Astro City, yeah. And obviously you've got the Sega Saturn, Easter Egg in the drawer. You got the Virtua Fighter Ooh. posters dotted around as well. Yeah, I wonder how I that sort of stuff came well, to be. If they weren't allowed okay. to like make a series of Sonic capsules, how were they allowed to, a you know, of a water sprite. bang a water Sega sprite? Saturn in there, bang, a fairy -like creature like you say, the Astro the City Do you reckon they just had the top of their heads a few things that they allowed them to the use? I don't know. I know, obviously, first for fire, that's Yu Suzuki's property as well, isn't it, in a way, in a sense, so he probably had... Potentially, you, you never know, because Shenmue started as Virtua Fighter RPG. Maybe by having the Shenmue license, that includes a lot of Virtua Fighter 2. Yeah, possibly, possibly. There'd be some assets in there, I'm sure. I'm just looking at the chat again. Uh... Strictly saying, a, bit of lag, what kind of a few people are there, saying about a lag. Yeah, I know on YouTube. I have no idea why YouTube lags because we we um you stream lags. So stream lags go to Twitch and and YouTube, and YouTube's always been behind. I've never worked it out. I might delve into. Yeah, well, that's why I'm watching Twitch as well because I'm looking at the YouTube and it's like five minutes behind. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know why it's it's obviously an issue with YouTube. To be honest, I might have to start using Restream or something like. That. But I like Streamlab because something I forgot to mention in the, in the intro was we actually have a few giveaways today, and I use the raffle function from Streamlabs to do it because it's the easiest That's way. The village's guardian. From then on, the white deer appears occasionally, saving the villagers from many other dangers. Oops. An interesting story. Oh, so, keyboard, come on. All the villagers. Got I've just resubscribed. <laughs> okay. With the Twitch thing. I'm have awesome. you still got those alerts up? Uh, it should pop up. I don't know. There we Maybe go. We'll... Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... What's this tree? It's cool. Retro Godfather. I can't see the anime getting ahead of the game. Yeah, I'm... Room up ahead too. I don't oh. think it I, will. I think, I think it'd be stupid too, wouldn't they? I think that would potentially destroy yeah. the franchise as a game, them? really? Like, the they're just going to end the, the story in the anime. Hmm. I think you want the other way around, don't you? In China, Ideally speaking, every, speak every Shen Shenmue fan there would, so many here, you know, like they're always going to want the game before the anime. So Guilin means the woods yeah, of Yeah, I think so. Really? But I, I, I love that we're living in a world now home. where Shenmue's back. Yes, it's as though the whole you know, I never expected it to Let's get an anime in the first place. Okay. I know people wanted a, a, a manga or a novel yeah. or whatever that people yes. were crying out for. That was just like 15 years of pain. They wanted that. They, people had <laughs> yeah. wanted anything really. Yeah. So Stone now that Shami 3 is back, I never expected to get an anime. So now we're getting an anime as well. I just think I we, we're just we're getting spoiled, and I think Stone people <laughs> people should appreciate what we're getting at the moment because we we took it for granted the first time. And the series was gone dormant for 15 be. years. I like that. Good. And what I just think now it's forward? back. People have lost that my expectation father. thing again, where it's my like, me a lot of you know, 
Like, like, like we've seen a lot of people have dropped yeah. off since Shenmue 3 has been released. Or people are, people are feeling comfortable again, mm. bizarrely. Yo, what's wrong? Um, it's, did I say something wrong? I just, it's just like, people, human beings just take a lot of stuff for granted, no. I find. You know, when you're living in the moment, it's like pre-COVID, pre, way, pre -COVID, village, you know, just go in the pub, just go in, let's go Japan we'll on holiday, do you know what I mean? Or let's just go drive so down to thing. And then for like two years now, we've not been able to do anything Shinpa. and we just take that stuff for granted, I think. We do, we do. And I think no matter with, with Shenmue 4, and I, 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 will, I will keep telling anybody this who asks me, because we got Shenmue 3, the, Did you it's not finished. We haven't finished. The battle hasn't finished because Shenmue, and I'm being honest with everybody, is a niche product. And but we need to be loud. We need to let people know that we want a fourth and a fifth game because if we don't, it won't happen. How do you find one? We need to be on Twitter fourth of every month. Let's get Shenmue four. Make that noise. That's how we got Shenmue so three, and we need to do it again. It, it, as I sort of said, oh yeah, it's fine. Shenmue three's natural. come out. We've got an anime no, coming out. That's the, the worst now. thing we can do. We need to be backing yeah, it the all the way, the despite what. Animals. Yeah, and I'm being honest. Shenmue three sky, divided opinion. Stars, Absolutely, and, and that's fine. You. But if you want to see a continuation Shinpa. of the series, yes. then we need to get behind it. And if we don't, then we will not. I'm just looking at the like chat well, again Shinpa? very quickly. Uh, yeah, Toxin on good. YouTube, nice to see you. How Welcome. You? Um, say, Hello, Yannix on Twitch. Nice uh, saying that Blu-ray gets um, animes get Blu-ray releases quite often. So yeah, great. Yanni X, <laughs> nice to see you. Um, I haven't seen you for a long time yeah. actually. How's it going, buddy? All right. A shop that sells a bit of a while since we saw his yeah. I mean, we haven't streamed. When was the last time we streamed? Was that about a month ago? Six yeah, weeks, I right. think. A little bit more. Six yes, weeks ago. Yeah. So, I mean, we, myself and Matt, don't actually well, stream all that often true. anyway. So, <laughs> he could have been in the last stream, Yannick, and uh, <laughs> no, 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 that would be fine. The yeah. name just, I, I'll say thanks for yeah. Matt for setting all this stuff up because I'm just sitting here. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> He's playing the game. He's got everything running on his, his super computer, and obviously idea. without without any of that, I, just, yeah. I wouldn't be here either. Like so, you know, thanks to Matt for for putting no, on the I show basically that. tonight Andy, um, and every night. Stuck a new stream. Stuck a new uh, processor in us since know. last time as well. So I don't know if you guys <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear it actually. Way, I've had to stick some more fans forced. in it because the actually it, bloody processor. It doesn't sound that bad now. Yeah, yeah it doesn't sound that bad now, man. Really. You did. You definitely fixed something in pre pre stream Good. playing around. Glad I fixed it. Um, Sliver of sand. Yes, we need to show publish publishers that we are still in trying. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. I, you... I'd I'd encourage people to buy the the Rio Hazuki Duck as well. I know it's yeah. it's a bit of a joke, but it just shows Sega that you know these fans out there are still buying the Shenmue merch. Exactly. You know, if, if uh, essentially, I would say if you see. Like how we mentioned at the start of the show, if you see a number two on that Tubbs Duck thing, we and we've got a new character, I would say that's a good indication that they thought enough You're people bought right? the first one yeah, yeah. that they can, can make a bit of a series out of the, the duck things. I know they're only fucking ducks, but just buying any any sort of Shemmy merch, I think. I mean, <laughs> Shemmy fans always have. You know, I think we've all bought ten copies of Shemmy three. You know, oh, at best, shit. anyway. <laughs> but uh, I just, I just think it all, it all goes into the greater good, do not it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it does. There we go. Right, that's better. Ginger Fairy. I was, to be honest, I was gutted with Shenmue Three, lack of story, but I thought it was a good game mm. overall. Yeah, I think, I, I think that's it. But you, you consider what they have in Shenmue um, Three, which is your core systems, your core elements. And I know we've said this a lot, and I will say it until I, you know, until I'm blue in the face, is that they can use that core system and and just build on it, smash the story, knock it out of the park for Shenmue Four. And I can, t and you'll be, you'll be right as rain. Ancient Ginger Fair, as you said, I think I've got enough Shenmue merch. <laughs> no, you can never have enough Shenmue merch. I although think we all have. My, my we wife, can never have enough fear. We need. Definitely need more space. The, the wife would disagree with me. Because in our. I think everyone's wives would. <laughs> in our back office, 
Um, where the wife unless works. unless you are the the wife that is a big Shemu fan. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And you've got the husband. The husband will be disagreeing with you probably. Because <laughs> in our back office, where my wife works, mm -hmm. I've got my Shenmue shelf, and I've got a load of stuff in one of my cupboards in this room where I can't because I haven't got the room to put it out. Yeah. And you, would, you consider right Shenmue merch now, like Shenmue Three. You've got the collector's editions. You've got all that sort of stuff. You look back when Shenmue One was announced, and they had all this merch, piles and piles of the stuff. All right, insane amount of stuff. Yeah, the Landy statues. Yes. Yeah. Are they are so bloody expensive yeah, on on eBay. They are now, mate. Yeah. I mean. I, I've got the statues, I've got the Rio and the the Landy ones it's when they first released and First of Figures actually yeah. did a nice way of buying them. They had like an instalment plan set up. So you could pay for them over like six months That's is how yeah. I paid for them. So That's it was only, bit, yeah. only paying like 20 or 30 quid a month for six months. It's not too bad really, is it? It's just, yeah, if you're going for bloody buying them now, you're talking what, they between 500 to a grand or something, are they? Well, you get some For the idiots. exclusive versions, I mean. You get some idiots trying to get like 1500, two grand on them, but I would say. Really? Yeah, the average. No chance. The average is probably about 500 quid, somewhere like that, for, for the, the statues now, I would suggest. I'd say, mate, because I got, I got the Shemmy Bust thing. Two grand. <laughs> you know. If you, you're not going to pay two grand for the first figure statue. No. In my opinion, in fact. What about this time by users? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I'll, true. That's I'll, a different I'll, thing. Then, then well, I'll give you some that, money. The amount of signatures he's done now yeah. is that lowered the value of a Yusuzuki signature? Possibly. I, mean, I think on the statue. What was it? 50? Yeah. I was going to say, is it fifty quid more for the vinyl signature? You know, the Shemu Three vinyl thing. It was about that, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's have a look at the chat as we as I try to do QTEs. <laughs> um, got my lucky on eBay with the exclusive Rio, got it dirt cheap. How much is dirt have cheap? Got, have you got any of them? Have you got any of them, Matt? No, no. I when they released, I was poor as fuck and had no money, <laughs> so I, I didn't. I couldn't justify it at the time, and I can't justify I'm the surprised. prices now. Here's I really can't. Surprise them. I haven't done another one since because they were they were showing off images of like a. They had a, a mock up of a Rio Real about two three yeah. years we ago. We never saw anything, man. No, what's this, Michael? What's the big change? What's your take on the big change in the battle gameplay? It seemed like you need to master moves in the first few games, keep good stuff for later games, only for a new control like method. With a clear spring, I think they're beautiful. I'm gonna address Ginger Fairy's comment in a minute because. It's my first time. I'm gonna compose no, myself right. in a minute. <laughs> anyway, um, it's just what you want to hear, isn't it? That? Yeah. Um, so, Michael, to your point, that's cheaper, cheaper than what it really released. <laughs> to your point, I think had it had we had the one, two, three, blah blah, blah and Dreamcast, then yes, we, the moves would have set you in good stead because you'd have had the carryovers, you'd have had the saves, etc. I didn't know that. Because they had to change the battle system for, for Shenmue 3 because they couldn't get the Virtual Fighter system because they couldn't get really yes, but it's all of that into, into gear. And yes. bearing in mind it's 20 years, they've retconned things as well. It's a bit of a shame, I think, that they've lost some of those moves. I like the battle system. It's a bit rough around the edges. Needs a bit of work. But I think put throws in there, tighten it up. I actually think you've got a good system in there overall. Now, as for Ginger Fairy, I hate you. <laughs> Going back to the the, <laughs> the fine stuff, man, it, it's a shame that they didn't really, you know, because they could have put a lot of that budget towards nailing the fighting engine. But I think from what we we heard from Ezra, mm. Yu Suzuki originally had it in his head that. You know, if we get two million, he's just going to make it a story-based game or whatever, like It'd a, like a um, perhaps a Telltale style. Yeah, like, that's I it. think that's what I mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have been so a, maybe the I battle engine wasn't even in his plans until he got six or seven mil, and then he was, he was like, "Shit, we're going to have to make the battle engine from scratch because you know Sega won't let me get the fish." Or you know, 
I don't know how much it would be to license a Virtual Fighter engine. But know. perhaps he just, he just wanted to, to do a new thing on his own. Yeah. So I mean, it's a shame he didn't get any, any throws in that system. Or, like, we've spoken about it before, really, like yeah. maintaining a lot of the moves. It's a shame that in Shemu 3, there's a lot of moves that you've already learnt in the first two games that end up being like a move scroll that you have to buy which you know it's it's weird it's it's not consistent i think i think the lack of consistency was probably my biggest mm. um i'd agree disappointment with i'd with agree Shemitry. i'd agree cause... because i love the game i love the gameplay they nailed everything about you know it feels like a shemu game the conversations the environments the actual movement of rio the even the down. battle system to an extent it still feels very much Shenmue, okay. but a lot of just the, the consistency this between so you know story things yes. like the sword is now a dagger. You know Shenmue's clothes have suddenly changed. You, you know they just come out of the cave. Yes, Even if they'd have, they could have just spent a little bit of the budget, dark, and, you know, gone back to a house well. first, also, and then we believe that maybe she changed at home. You know she's got a new outfit on. That would have been fine. She's changed at home. You know, we won't even question it, but it's just weird Soon, going from going instantly the end of Shemu 2 to Shemu 3 and see all these little th done. these little changes. You know, Shemfor's house, it it's got a new room, a new extension. Travelers you know, it's it from the rain. it's cool. It was along the cliff you know, that, that room in Shemu 3 good. works, but in a sense, it's sloppy. It's It feels like it's... You'd want to keep your consistency there, wouldn't you? You've got your, your scroll of... Luang or whatever that, that place is called that's right. turned into a picture of Phoenix or whatever, or, you know, even just a, a I think it's a picture of Bailey Village, actually. I think you know, why would you not want to just maintain the consistency so that you can play Shenmue 2, play Shenmue 3 and it yeah. feels perfect. It's just weird. Those are the, the only little niggly little, little things that were like a minor disappointment. I think, from, from, I think from, Paddy's nailed it. Actually, they would have benefited from a continuity guy. Yeah, I mean, bearing in mind it's you know it's fifteen twenty years from two to three and their development and all the rest of it. And I know things change. Like the Luang Luang tapestry that may have changed for the release yeah. in China, which ironically I don't think's ever happened. But I'll just just <laughs> just leave it. That's leave still not sure. That, yeah. that is um, a strange point. I'm just going through the chat again. Yanni X, have we talked about the Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown? Yeah, we did touch on that earlier, actually. Um, I'm going to get it. Looking forward to it. Give me bloody Virtual that, Fighter the, 6 now. Is that the official title, is it, then? Yes, Ultimate it Showdown. is, yeah. Okay. Uh, just look at the chat again as well. Mm, yeah, I, I mean, I will make a point of that. They, they could have done with someone on the team that could have told you Suzuki like you know this, all these yeah. nit nitty these nit nitty gritty story elements that you know we all know and we've played the games like 20 30 times or whatever if not if not more well, yeah we know the games don't then, we but well, then did they you know did you know how many now times has no con kid played and completed the games he seemed like a massive fan how many times has Ryan Payton these yeah. sort of people do you think those would be the people that would be saying like I mean I, I don't know how, how much Ryan Payton actually got to see the game in terms of like playing Looks through like the whole game before it was released kind of thing and who did you ever find that in the, in the, in the interview was the, the did you get a full copy of the game the, the impression I got is through development he played sections of it because Ryan from when I was speaking to him he, he travelled to Japan I think every six weeks something like that I can't quite remember yeah so he will see like a slice of it so i don't know how much he saw but i think yeah. it would have benefited with somebody on the team just to go have you thought about yeah. sort of seven stars have you thought about Shen yeah. yeah just those little things that i think would have made a difference that i think had that been there i think it would have helped appease some people but there is one of those things isn't it um i mean the, the, the thing with the Sword of Seven Stars, I, I do appreciate, I think, I don't know if it was a blog post we got from phantomoverstone.com. It was supposed to be a dagger, wasn't it? Yeah, Yu Suzuki's original intention was it to be a dagger, and I think I'll go find them. some of the writers or the fire. team involved at the yeah. time wanted the, the end of Shenmue to go out with a bang kind of thing, which is why we got this, this 
crazy ending to Shenmue 2 Bloody that kind of like blew our minds at the time. So, you know, the magic and the floating sword and stuff. And that was one of the things they were saying was they kind of went over the top of that sort of stuff. So Yu Suzuki wanted to dagger. You know, we made a massive bloody sword, massive great sword kind of thing, just because we knew it was like it was going to be the end of an era kind of thing. Um, but in my opinion, they've done that. So regardless of whether it's supposed to be a dagger in the first place, this won't be you've enough. got to maintain that it's still a massive sword. And I know that Yusuke probably thinks, well, that doesn't make sense. How is that in Yusuke, uh, Ryo, Ryo Azuki's pocket? Or inventory. How's that going to stay in his pocket? Do you know what I mean? A massive sword. Nice. Or he can't carry it, car carry around a massive sword for the whole Bailu village section of the game until he gets to the bow tower. But I just think they could have had a, they could have given us a, an answer at least to why it's shrunk. Mm. You know, maybe he could have reshown the the cave scene at the start, perhaps. And you know, after all the fancy Nancy stuff, the sword that was floating crashes down. And shrinks you know and then he's got his dagger <laughs> and that you know just little things like that would have just I kept the there. the narrative consistent mm. going through the chat again very quickly i'm gonna start at the top um um is that jiggle 85 nice to see you i haven't seen you in chat before um thank you for listening to all the podcasts um we're on episode four now the latest, oh, cool. the latest interview I've done is with Ezra, so hopefully you've you've, um, you've picked that up as well. Nice kiss from him as well. We got a little kiss. But, no, thank you for dropping in. Nice to see you. Um, Thanks, man. Who else? Appreciate that. We've got Ginger Fairy. I can't wait to see the Sword of Seven Stars in the Limited Run Collector's Edition. Mm. Well, I have a... I, I'm, I'm going to do, if I can, I can get it set up. I'm going to do an unboxing of it. So when it turns up, I'm going to do an unboxing, show yeah. it on YouTube. So there I'll be very interested to see what people think I'll of it. But I am looking yeah. forward to we seeing have, it. We have spoke about that actually, doing like a, a massive Shemu 3 item comparison thing. So like, I thought it would be a good idea to show off the original collector's editions, compare it with the the new version or whatever, and just show off all the, the Shemu 3 items that we've we've actually had since release. I kind of want to have a look at the. Uh, that little dagger again, actually. Chat again on YouTube. Uh, code I name hit. Nice to see you. Um, thank you for dropping in and thank you for all your forum posts and listening to all the interviews and podcasts. I know you're uh, avidly listening to them, so it means a lot that you, you take the time to tune in to us, be it on Twitch, YouTube, Spotify, whatever the podcasts <laughs> are. Yeah, it, it it means a lot that you guys are taking the time to listen to us. I should go back. I've just linked the uh, actual you image there of, or oh, well, the mock-up. I mean, I, I don't know the if they're going to stick to these uh, mock-up images for yeah. the actual items. But you can see the sword at seven stars there. It's a little dagger. And has it got the little dots on? The seven stars, so it's got one, two. Well, obviously it's a replica, so it must have. But yeah. it does look really nice, doesn't it? If they can make it look... I think it's supposed to be. Was, did we work out it's like three inches or something? So it's not going to be very oh. big. Hmm. No, but it's still. It's going to be smaller. It's nice. It's going to be smaller than the dagger in <laughs> Shimmy Three. But uh, it's nice, really nice. Do you and then you've got the Chobu Chan and, and Bailu, Bailu Chan figures. Did you come to oh Chan? man, That's pretty cool. I'm looking forward yeah. to them. They're we like know, they're, they're, yeah, we don't know how big they're, they're going to be, do we? We've got. Sure, I've got. Were you able to meet this person? Yeah. Who was this person? What's her name? Greed. Yeah, Greed. Uh, thingy on Twitter. Yes, she sent us a I little, little one. It's about, about, about an inch tall, about that big, aren't they? Not. Well, they're really well made, aren't they? they? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got one of those. Yeah. Well, I've got. Have you got two? Yeah, she sent me two. Yeah, you sent me two. The person dressed in blue. Greed, yeah. Thank oh, you, Paddy. Greed? Thank no. you. Greed, yeah. 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 Yeah, she Naomi, uh, her name is on Twitter. Greed Air. Greed underscore Air. Would have been. Uh, she's a Japanese fan, and she's made these awesome little Chobu chans. Destiny. Um, yes. So, you didn't meet her by I don't know how big we're going to actually get the figures Destiny with the limited edition, limited run games. But I'm quite happy with that, to be fair. Yeah, they're quite Destiny. nice, aren't they? I mean, if they were that size, I'd quite happily have it. Um, just looking at the. 
chat again. Code I name or Sqtan actually is your no, your name on YouTube. You strikes me as a broad ideas man, but it's forgotten about the small intricate details. I think that's where you have a writing team come in and sort of fill out those little details. You have someone who does the continuity stuff as well. But then this is all goes what back to the point before you joined. We, James and I were talking about how maybe the anime team, if the anime gets a progression, you get into season two, season three, that they may be able to pick that up and and write the story for the game, so it could work that way. You must be hungry. Uh, Ginger we Fairy talking about the Bailey Chans. Hope they're not made of cheap home? plastic. I mean, the limited. I don't know if you've got limited run game stuff before, but cooking. most of it's pretty damn good quality. Actually, I've, I've never I'll been be disappointed with quality, the stuff yeah, they've put together. Um, it takes a long time to turn I'm up. <laughs> um, sorry, Josh. Yeah, I'll be fair. I it's really, the, really um, No. I can imagine them being like the same kind of material that they make dice out of. That kind of hard plastic. I can imagine it feeling like that. How do you get your meat? We catch them in the mountains. In the mountains. Um, sorry, I'm just logging in. Sounds like a lot of work. I'm gonna make Paddy and Lod, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, please do. Because I was gonna go and link. I was gonna link. Um, Read as Twitter. The meat, well, then I thought I could get Paddy to when do it. Our gifts from the mountains, the meat satisfies our hunger. I don't do it, man. Protects us from the cold. Everything is a gift. You should from the be mountains. able to right-click. You might have to go into the, the uh, Twitch channel about. itself. Yes. On the back yeah, end I've, of I've it. Logged in. I've logged in as. How do you usually spend your I'm time? I swear you used to be able to just click. Oh, you can. Yeah, mod Paddy here. That worked. Find out in a minute. Paddy types them in the chat if you've got a sword next to it. You're, you're a I'm just going to go through the chat again as well while we're here. Um, I wonder how us fans would react. Yeah, Paddy is now a mod. Uh, would, would react if you see the 70% new luck like he originally wanted. Curious outside worrying factions, what new elements you consider. Joe, you know, I would be as well. If I ever get to interview him, because he, I, I would love to interview yeah, Suzuki. We used to have a it lot is of a, working up to it. it working up to it. Um, it's a question cool. I will ask actually, because like Ryan, what were your friends sort of, like? Ryan Payton talked about how they were sort of looking about new gameplay features, etc., and how it's been pegged back to sort of be more 50-50. Yeah, I think that is a, that is a Tom. definite question I would Tom? be asking. He's from the without States. without a He's doubt. A I think guy. we'd all be quite keen Did to know to that. And actually, my I have an interview. Penciled no, in, um, unfortunately, in um, Bill Black, who did the it's voices, uh, was the voice director for Shenmue 3, he was always has had to have jaw surgery, like and person. we've had yeah. to put it back. But I will be interviewing him in June, probably no. mid to end of June. I'm looking to book to that day. in, and we've got some really exciting fine. stuff actually oh. coming from Bill. Bill's been um, nothing short of fantastic in terms of talking to me and and, li and sorting a few bits and pieces out from behind oh, yeah. the scenes i'm not going to spoil it we're going to wait Bottle? but um just so everybody's aware that's that's an interview that is coming up i should have when that hopefully him, as long as bill's cleared taking money from by people. the end of june what but i need to um bullying? i need to get He's on it with another interview actually i need requests like anyone <laughs> inside he's a nice guy he doesn't do this things anymore People you could contact, I suppose. Paddy, he asked what he thinks of the Kelso Lucas mod. He started calling me. I think. I mean, you got that as a question. I'm sure you have. I do. It, that I, would be I, an interesting question. I, yeah. I, I do have that as a question, actually. It is in just there. say like, because obviously you're going to say it in a nice manner. You're not going to say like, why on earth did you not recast Kelso? You're going to say like, you know, Greg Chun did a great job, which he did. No. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but. You know, the fans of the, the original two games have gone off and spoke to Eric Kelso, who obviously voiced Ren, and voiced Guizang and Fukusan in the first game. You know, have you, you seen the mod that was put out there? You know, what did you think of Eric? I guess, I don't know. It's, it's definitely there. The question, the question is in. Don't, don't you worry. The question is in. I will be asking that. And... I'd like to see what he says about that. I, I would I can't, can't really... Any regrets? You can't really. I don't know. It's, it's a difficult question to answer. Is what I mean. Like it's it's that kind of thing. Like Yu Suzuki being asked if Landia's with Simi. <laughs> if he is, it's a it's a tough question to answer. It you can't. There's no right answer. 
if no, I it's... The chance, I'd like to spar and with him again. we don't know what the discussions were behind the scenes yeah. in terms what of casting or anything like that. I will, I will try my best to um, tease some of that out Nozomi. because Nozomi, I think. I, have a I think that's something we can look at. And Pad as Paddy's saying, since the pandemic, remote working in general, not just voiceover, but remote working has become much more normal. Yeah. So, true. that argument of we couldn't do it I'm not sure. may not exist now, but she it may have done at the time. I don't, but this is all I stuff I'm going to ask. Don't, don't you worry. And I see um, that we've got the Calso mod She's linked in there, which James yeah. and Paddy uh, yeah. Lemon Hayes worked on. So they got Eric I to re record the Ren line in Shenmue 3 on PC. And we played it. The last stream we did, we played it through actually. So if you haven't checked that mod out, do, because it's a bloody fantastic piece in of work. Canada. And credit to all the team that are involved. So, country, far away. If you can't download it, say if you've not got Shenmue 3 for the PC, we her? did do a, a video series. You did, actually, you did a video playlist of all the scenes. Done. I have to go through that first. So, but also I need to get a link for whatever, just go on the just go on the Shenmue Dojo YouTube channel. And... <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a playlist for wait. all the scenes anyway. I, that get some sleep. I did each of the, the Eric Castle scenes and then I, I recently did what well, Crikey, it's like two weeks ago now, but I did the um, the quest as well, did, friend's yeah. quest. You did. Just looking. Really, really cracking job from Eric. Retro In God. fact, that was another a news thing we could have done. It'll be a fine just last one. night, I don't know if anyone caught oh, it, but little with Lisa and yeah, 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 yeah. Just little book to me. She did a, a stream with Eric, Paul, and Michael. Really. I didn't know how to pronounce his name, it's actually. The voice of, it was the voice of Dylan, wasn't he? The voice of Dylan in the, um, in the English dub. Thank you. Just look at the chat. You get a link for that. Look at the chat. Unless Paddy can beat me to it. Retro Godfather, like the look, look, like, look of the posters in the complete edition. Yes, lovely. Paddy, straight in there with the link. Oh. Showing us up. Mod. Modding off. Off. Mm. Mm. This weeks ago. He's mugging us <laughs> off. I reckon he's mugging us off here. There you go, man. Let me just check that link, just make sure it's right. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. that's, the, that's the Eric Calso voice mod. He's a little bit behind, actually. We want the, the link for Lizzle's stream if you can. Eric. Just random, just as a side point, I love this <laughs> I love this scene where it pans around Rio doing Chai, Tai Chi. I really like it. It, it sort of captures that. We not spirit. really spoke about the game, have we? It was like one of the reasons for doing this. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, what 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 have you just done in the cave? Because I haven't got volume. In. I haven't got the sound of the I've game. I've just got Rio doing some Tai Chi, so we're good. We've done through the the yeah. um the talk conversations about Rio's friends and everything, so we're all right. Okay, we're, okay. We're, we're all good. I actually need to do um. I will actually need to do a bloody prize draw. Because I forgot to mention, but I have a um. Another Kickstarter T-shirt to give away. Okay, man. I'll get that. I'll get that link. I am. Um, yeah. So sorry. I'll be drawing this in a bit. Don't you worry. And I also have one of these bad boys in extra large to give away. Did you learn that from your father too? I promise you, I do not have a stack of stuff in my cupboard. But I mostly learn from watching. So what? What have you got? You've got. I've got a Kickstarter uh, T-shirt in medium, and I've got the medium. And I've got the white the rear white Hazuki the in extra large, yeah. yeah. So they'll be getting given away a bit later. Power and everything. Cool, cool. So there's the Wil um, the Lizzle Wilkerson stream that I just spoke about. Um, I'll oh, set the raffle up so she, in a bit for the Kickstarter yeah. T-shirt because I could do with a wig. So she, she did that. She did that stream last what night, and I did listen to it Whoa. all early. Actually, some good interest in. Uh, it's kind of like a reunion for them, um, since I think some of them last met like 2012. Um, but it's just nice to see these. Obviously, they all work together on Shemu and Shemu 2's voice work back in the day. And it was a bit of a, a reunion stream, really, mm. on Lizzle Wilkerson's channel there. That I've linked. So some good stories from everyone, basically. Oh. Uh, That's why we built a fire yeah. at the entrance. Did you have you had a chance to watch that yet, Matt? I haven't, unfortunately. It is on the list we of things keep to the fire do. Going, then. I will watch it. It was a bit of a bad time. Out. I think it was like four AM or something for UK sure? time. So yeah, it's quite. quite I'd nice. love to love to watch it live, but yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, just looking at this in the chat again. Uh, Furnished up for so we have the Unreal project. It'd be good to get the original modding scene interview. Landy seeing history of his mods. Yeah, th that's a good call actually. Paddy, it's great to camaraderie still from the project. Do you know something, Paddy? It's something I've noticed across all the voice actors. Corey, Eric, Liesel. Shenmue sort of unites them. It's it's funny, but it's it's nice. And they talk about it, it really, really fondly, don't they? It is literally because of Shenmue that they all know each other and they all continue to speak to each other, in it? Because I don't think they'd be... They'd, like that stream, that Lizzle, Lizzle stream last night, I don't think that would have happened without Shenmue. No, no you know absolutely I mean? not. Absolutely not. So like Paddy says, you know, it's a good com camaraderie. Um, it is, it's really nice to see the, the voice actors themselves so passionate about the game. I mean, you've got Corey, he streams it like twice a week or at least once a week. Corey streams are, good, are a good laugh as well normally. Yeah, I, I, enjoy was, I was streams. gutted he didn't stream today actually, I was surprised, but I didn't catch the end mm. of his stream last week. Race for good. Have you just been tagged in? Oh, oh the dojo's been tagged in. Sega Lounge. Just wearing a Sega Lounge t shirt. Ah, uh, at the moment. I need to get, I need to get KC, one of those. Good old Casey. The, um, yeah. Casey, you, you're going to do an interview with him actually at some point. Yeah, I'm going to get um, him. I'm that, going to get him on the show. That's like our, our, our roots in podcasting. We first appeared on the, the Sega Lounge. And uh, we basically created the podcast because of that, I think, because yeah, it went so well. <laughs> it, it, it just started everything off, didn't it? it? Just sort of, I don't know, it gave us that impetus just to go, all right, then, let's let's take this take this on. I think there is, yeah. I think there's like a, a niche kind of gap in the market thing for a good Shemu podcast. I know, obviously, we've got the Shemu AM, AM2, AM2 yeah. podcast, which is, you know, a cracking podcast. Um, in a sense, any any Shenmue content, I think, you know, all all began for the greater good, really, for the series. If it's just really enjoyable, I think. I like doing <laughs> just creating well. the episodes is really enjoyable as, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. It's 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 enjoyable, and you know, or at least you hope that a lot of people are enjoying the shows themselves. You know, the the it's kind of keeping Shenmue Shenmue in the limelight a little bit at the same time. Yeah. Did I wake you? No. Uh, yeah, so we've just what been tagged in something by the Sega Lounge, There's is what I was saying. Race for Good is back. It's fourth edition, yeah. and this time more people there are joining are the boys. The Read more here. What was the meaning what of that song? I don't know, I'm wondering if this is what, because we, we've got something, I'd, I'll, I'll tease it, because we've only got like, what, a maximum of 30 people watching? Yeah. So we're supposed to be doing something next Wednesday for the Sega Lounge. So I'm wondering if that's this. The river where you saved me. So if you're a regular wow. listener of the Sega Lounge, you'll know about the Race for Good event hosted for the past three years by our friends Andrew, the British Andy Wilson, and Pete Titans Creed Nevercott. They've been raising money for the amazing charity that is Special Effect, which we took part in actually, what was that, a couple of months ago? Yeah, we raised over £200 for Special Effect. We had a really good stream that night. Hmm. Uh, while racing each other in Sonic games. So this year, the event is back for its fourth edition, taking place between the 21st and the 27th of June. So what's that next month? And the guys decided to spread out and invite other streamers from the Sonic community and beyond to join them for a whole week of streams. So here's the list of team members for RFG 2021. Have we been signed up to something we didn't know about? <laughs> We're not linked on that that news post. Okay. I, mean, I don't mind. So I'm, I'm, I'm game for most no, no, things. I, but... I'm, I'm game for that. We can play Shenmue. And uh, at least for if there's some Sonic relevance needed, we could like just buy Sonic capsule buy some capsules. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it says apart from the streams, there will also be other planned activities, and you'll be able to buy official merch to support special effect. That's lovely weather. So it just seems like another good like Shenmue uh, special effect event. It hasn't been a year, though, has it? What, what, no, when the special effect was that? February time, I think. If I had to 
hazard a guess. Mm. What it's I am... bloody hell, time's flying if it's been a year. <laughs> All the mountains here have such strange shapes. But aren't they beautiful? Yeah. He may have they accidentally tagged us, actually. I think he's reposted Shen Shen. the tweet. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I, mean, I don't mind. I'm game for most things, I will say that. Beautiful no, shapes. I don't mind. Yeah, we can play a bit of Sonic anyway, if we oh, wanted to. Right, I'm going um, to quickly, I'm going to set up the the Kickstarter t-shirt um, giveaway. giveaway quickly. Good stuff. So the exclamation mark raffle as, as normal. Hopefully I don't break anything mm -hmm. while doing this. Just bear with me. And then I'm going to run to the loo because if I don't, I will probably die. Okay, shall we both have a break then? Yeah, so we'll have like a two minute break. Just to wait, make sure the... Hang on, Ginger Fairy, it's not come up yet. Just bear with me. It should pop up in the chat now. Right, oh, it's open now. Drop in. Is this, what size is this? This medium, is the, the medium. Medium, 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 medium. So, ginger, so it should fit Paddy. Ginger Fairy, if you put your put it in again, and it works on YouTube as well, put it in again, it should give you a ticket. I'm going to be back in a moment. If I can get up. Oh, good, good stuff, man. Retro go farther. I just had a look at the Lizzle Wilkinson stream. We'll be watching that too, so like, no problem. S. Cutting the Tai Chi scene was was first time we see patience and a little ooh, introspection from Rio. Also, it's kind of cool to hear hear of Rio having story experience outside events. Play see, yeah, that's a good point actually. So, like, you see in the Tai Chi, it's like it's demonstrating some of the stuff he's. He's, he's learnt from, I'm guessing, like, chewing, was it Xiamen in the, ooh, South Common Quarter, that park. He's doing his Tai Chi stuff. Guixang, whatever her name is, Guixang, Gui, <laughs> from the Anton Apartments. Was she doing Tai Chi at some point? So yeah, I, I know what you're saying there. It's it's cool to see Rio actually doing this, and he does do it a little bit in Shenmue Three as well. Then he does the the Tai Chi at the end of the Bailu Village chapter, um, and then he goes on to lose against a couple of shit thugs. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> He's uh, can't do a medium. I mean, you're welcome to still have a go on the raffle, guys. If obviously it's it's this this particular shirt's for a medium, but I mean, you you you're welcome to pass it on to a friend or something or someone you know might be into Shemu themselves, or have a go for for someone in the chat. Oh, there we go. Wang San's brother, yeah, yeah. Wang San's brothers in the Anton apartments as well. Seeing, oh, we've got some entrance, which is cool. good. Now you're back. I'll go for where I thought. Ah. I might as well just carry on. And yeah. then. <laughs> You've got seven minutes, everybody. Um, just in case you didn't notice it. It should all be there. Hmm. Oh, excuse me while I get a drink. Paddy. Oh, it's all... Okay, was that... Was that like groups of them, Paddy? Or was it just like random people on their own. Good old vodka. Eh, yeah, true. Give it you. Oh dear. There we go. I'll wait, wait for James to come back before I crack on. What have we got in the chat? Let's just make sure I haven't missed anything while well, we're here. I think we're okay. Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, 
I'd love to go to Hong Kong, actually. I don't, well, I don't know about the moment necessarily, but it's somewhere I want to visit. I want to do China. I want to do Japan as well, actually. Paddy, I haven't, I haven't had the privilege yet, but it's on the bucket list of, of places to visit. I want to do the, the Shenmue pilgrimage, of course, go to Dobuita and do the street, do the harbour, all those sorts of things. Um, I know, I think, Paddy, you've done them, haven't you? Has anybody else in chat done the um, done the Dogwita Do pilgrimage? Done the done the uh, harbour. I can't talk anymore. Horrendous. Uh, welcome, Dome. Uh, Two thousand three hundred. Thank you for the entry. No, I wouldn't say it's biased, actually, looking through the nostalgia in terms of Shenmue 2 in the art direction. I think it's spot on. Um, I think it stands up quite well today, actually. And it's amazing um, how they got this bloody running on a Dreamcast, to be fair. Ginger Fer yes, he did do a video on the Shenmue locations he, he visited. I have seen that video. It's quite old now, actually. He did it a while ago. Hello. Hello, James. Did I miss anything? Exciting. No, we're just talking about Shenmue Pilgrimage. Retro Godfather, I can confirm your entries in, by the way. I've just seen it, so you're okay. Right, let me get the game going again. I mean, I want to talk about Shenmue Pilgrimage. Paddy in the chat has been... Shenpa. Yes? Most places, aren't he? I think he's been. Let's get that. Uh, it looks it. like we're going down the mountain. Um, he's been. Are we getting near the village? Hong Kong. Yes, that's yeah. Right. Mamo Temple. Some good photos there. So once we get through this path, the Street. Like we'll be it's been a couple of times. Yeah. Even went the. Um, was it twenty? Oh. When did Shemu one and two come out? Was that twenty eighteen? Are you tired yes. now? The IGN yes. The IGN. Yes. So, I'm fine. Mm. Good. Have you gotten used to the mountain paths yet? And obviously at that um, pilgrimage page in my magazine, Shamu World. No, not yet. So can it, what else oh. is there? Um, Yanni X is going to Hong Kong. And we'll go there this year. Fantastic. Foothold. Take photos. Because yeah. Mammo Temple, it's actually, considering how it's so accurate in Shenmue 2 to the photos that I've seen. Honestly, it's amazing. I had oh. a right. greater respect for it, actually, since. Um, was it Ezra? I did an Ezra post. It's been a or he did a. I walked on was it 2011? I think he did a, a blog oh, post. He did, yeah, you shared it the other day. You shared it, yeah. Um, let's see if we can find that. In Japan, well, that was brilliant, that was. That was like seeing actually a comparison of the game to the actual temple yeah. and even the the detail on the door. It's beyond the sea. It was like. Uh, I'd like to see it. Crazy. You have never seen the sea before? But then it's Farm very approach. it's very Shenmue, isn't it? That sort of attention to detail. Like I know people will look at Shenmue 3 and go, um, yeah, it didn't have the story, etc. blah blah blah. But actually the attention to detail in terms of the accuracy of the, of the areas that you see, like especially in Niawu when you go to the temples and all the rest of it and the fact it's based on a real place, even though it's it's a fictional name. The attention to detail is still there. All these years on, it's still there, and that's really, really impressive. You understand each other. Yanni X, yes, if you want to post them on the Dojo forum, absolutely go ahead and do it. Please, I'd encourage it. Absolutely encourage it. Go ahead. Yeah, me too, man. We, we, we do tend to miss a lot of stuff, actually, because we've got a, we've got so much stuff going on, dipping our toes in, you know, social media. We've got to think of this the main site posts and that sort of stuff so if anyone can make a topic on anything Shinfa. in particular yeah, do it, do it, on the forums just do it man like i don't know if there's a topic for the the bloody duck the, the rubber duck <laughs> but you know just make it because uh you knew about the rain it's, it's the something fresh right? it's something new for shamu oh. yes i can it's, tell the it's worth discussing the uh, i've got this post actually let me just than what you said Sorry, yesterday in the forest. I felt the humid wind from the west. Move on. It was a sign that Plenty the rain were out. approaching. <laughs> you can tell all that. So this is uh, what I just mentioned, the, the Ezra's 
Okay, this well, is a this is the, yes, the tweet I did. Oh yeah, of course. That was sharing that Ezra's trip to Mamo Temple. Just, just whack that open now. Really? Just have a look at the photos. Oh. The, the comparison the between Mamu Temple and what we get too. in Shenmue 2, you know, it's I uncanny. Could. It's yes. But it's, 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 again, it's, it's Shenmue, it's, 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 it's this attention to detail, it's that world building, it's all of it, isn't it? I don't Shenfar. I, yes? I would struggle to find a game, even, even yeah. to these days, with the modern technology you've got available, has that attention to detail. They all do like one or two things a excellently, landslide. but Shenmue did a lot of things excellently. Yeah. So everybody's aware the raffle for the we Kickstarter T-shirt has just it's shut. I will draw it shortly. Night. Is there another path we can take? Good luck. Know. Good luck. Good luck. Just looking at the entries Wait, very quickly. Excellent. Everybody's path. in there. Another path. Fantastic. Don't matter. Don't matter if you've already got the shirt. You know, like I say, you can give it away to a friend or, yeah, you know, if it doesn't fit you. Hmm. Totally sliver. That actual that one at the door for me is that yeah insane. They've they've even got the exact same kanji symbols going down the poles. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. When they've they've, you just look at that and go, yeah, it's it's rep, it's a like for like replica. Yeah, I know. Obviously, I'm guessing you Suzuki went there on his research trip and like he took photos of stuff, but it's it's great to see. I, I know we spoke about this before. Like, it might be. Again, I don't. It's not licensing issues, but I, I'm hoping that they they do go back to kind of like. Creating sure. real life locations again. We don't have a choice. Obviously, the last location we got is proper. That's like Guilin. Let's go, Shenfa. At least this, this, this. Well, obviously not this path. I was going to say this, <laughs> this particular path we're walking on now. But just this, this environment of Guilin, um, was meticulously crafted enough for Ezra to want to go to Guilin and visit it. Is what I mean. So when you've got, you know, Bailu Village and uh, Niawu. I like places that could be based on other places, but Niawu at least we don't actually know what that's based on. You can't really do a Shamu pilgrimage in, as such to Niawu, so I just hope that in Shamu 4 they, they bring back the, the real life locations. Like if we do go to Liu Wang, whatever the. What mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but if we do go to that city, that just adds another pilgrimage place to go. I, I, I would love that, you know. Chat quickly again. It's a uh, Sliver of Sand, Let's Mammo Temple is amazing how accurate it is. Yes, Let's do that. 100%. Yanni X um, spoke with some friends mm. in Hong Kong, mentioned that Shenmue 2 has better details of Hong Kong places than Sleeping Dogs. I think that's just testament to the amount of research that's gone into Shenmue as a, as a franchise itself. And yeah. I know Niawu is based off of a real place. I can't remember the supposed to be, yeah, I can't name of it either. now, but um, guys who are on the Someone forums quite regularly, could you, if anyone can bung the name in the chat, that'd be really Is helpful. Fang, some, Fang something. Yeah, I can't remember. I really should. I really should be better than this, but yeah. Because there's like a canal and there's like that sort of shopping environment looking area. But I do think, didn't Ezra say on your show, like there's nothing really in China that it's like Niawu. Yeah, I can't quite... I'd have to listen to it back. I'm horrendous. Or Niawu is kind of like a, a mashup of different locations kind of thing. Mm. I think that's Because like when I went to China, I, I would say uh, from when I, I, I visited China, I went to uh, Shouzhou, Shouzhou. And I think that is actually a place that Yu Suzuki went to, Shouzhou. And it's kind of like it's got canals running everywhere. Thanks, Paddy. It's got those kind of river. those um, those side street sort of path shopping areas with the lanterns and stuff. Yo. I took a few few photos that reminded me of um, the hour at get the time. There. Yeah. So I mean, I, you could have just butchered together a few a few different places. The river is shallow here. Feng no. Huang. Is that the place? Is it? That's the place. Yeah. Ginger fairy. See if you Google that. Alright, sorry, be careful. Oh, sorry. Carry on, carry on. I'll 
Ginger Fairy, I won't forget you, don't worry. Yeah, I'm just saying if you Google what Paddy's just said, the, the Feng Huang, oh, and click way. images, it does look like Niao, doesn't it? You've got that bridge. Although that looks like the Verdant Bridge, actually, I'm looking at one picture. Right. You know, it's got the... In mm. fact, that is like a replica of the Verdant Bridge. <laughs> Chuck it in the chat. Um, it's not, obviously, it doesn't look like Wee Lin, though. Or Bailey Village, I mean. We can move on. Oops, hang on, it's opened yes. another page. Good. Let's go. I'm just looking at this particular image. Um, really need a better system. Yeah, You're gonna go. have to see the side of my face for a bit, guys. I'm just gonna ah, it's all right. Don't worry. Um, Ginger Fairy, does the white dots on the map mean anything? No, I think it's just just a guide more than anything else, just to make sure you don't you don't get too lost in the path of wheeling. Um. Although I could get lost in the music, quite frankly, as Yanni X was saying to the previous QTE. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm yeah gonna the white, white docks is just, just where you've been into the white I'm docks. I'm quickly draw, as we've got 30 seconds, I'm going to draw the competition. If my mouse lets me. Excellent. Ooh, well done, man. Congrats. So Zolikan has won one of the uh, the Shenmue uh, three Kickstarter T-shirt. Uh, Zolikan, if you're in chat, could you drop us a message on our Twitter page, direct message with your address and details, and we will make sure that gets shipped out to you as soon as possible. But don't worry, everybody. There's a Rio T-shirt to give away. So, go into the game a little bit. Let's talk about what you're actually doing in the game. Have you got to any of the yeah. the split when paths yet, where stones, you see the the fancy waterfall thing? I haven't. I'm nearly. Um, I'm nearly there. Okay, and also obviously the the, the scene art. where she tries to kiss Rio. <laughs> Slide your feet as a bird would glide Do you know which way you're going for that? You might have to remind me. I was taught that. Retro God I think it's left, is it? Got the slacker back a t-shirt, but not that one. Ah, um, all the time. Retro Godfather. No, not, not too really. expensive on, on eBay, actually. 15, 20 quid. It's not too bad. Does anyone know the the correct path to take for Shenfar kissing? I feel like when she says left or right, it's left. You got across safely. Yeah. Let's go. The village is still further ahead. Zolikan, I haven't right. seen you in chat before as well, so welcome. Good to see you. Congratulations, of course. Um, drop us a message on our Twitter page. Any problems? That you, you know, you can't get us on Twitter because direct messages can be a little bit funny on there sometimes. Drop a just drop a line in our in our chat, and we'll we'll try and sort something out to make sure you get your prize. Don't you worry. I love this music as well, man. This music's ridiculous. It's so good. I wish I could hear it. Oh, of course you can't, can you? <laughs> I can't hear anything, man. That's why I've not been talking about the game. <laughs> can't hear anything apart from you. My droning nice old voice. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is interesting. Sliver of Sand. I think it's really interesting that Feng Kuang is also a reference to Phoenix. In fact, yeah, that is really interesting considering we meet Niaosun in, in Niaolu. Oh, okay. So what? What? What's the reference? Okay. I've got a link here. Hunan Fen Huang brackets Phoenix ancient town, ah. an old town built up in King Qing Dynasty. There you go, the Qing Dynasty. Bloody hell! <laughs> I didn't know that. That's a really good link. <laughs> yeah. So it says it's still being kept in its original appearance with 300 years past. The ancient town is located in the southwest of Hunan province, bordering the prefecture level cities of Huai Huao to the southeast and Tongren, which is Guizhou, apparently, to the west. It is a well, 50 minute drive away from the nearest city of Jishou City. Jishou, that's a yeah. dictionary in Japanese. It's a random word for you there. Uh, away from Changsha, uh, which is about three hours driving away from Zhangjiaji. 
which is, uh, I don't know if this is any... Ooh! Shit in our mate! Covering an area of 1.8 kilometers, the ancient city is a gathering place for Meow. Remember that uh, loading screen we had that said Meow Village? Yes, 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 yes. There you go. It's a gathering place for Meow, whatever that is, and Tuja ethnic minority. Interesting. Mm, so, uh, well, it says using that word. Um, so, ranking as the top ancient town in China. Thank you, Ang Ancient Town is a guidebook for people to know the past life in the pre-modernization period. The wooden houses and stone roads are the typical scenes here. Wooden houses and stone roads. Is that... Would you say that is like Niawu? Wooden... The wooden structures. The shops and stuff. Some of them are, aren't they? Yeah, big wooden roofs and... Yeah, possibly. It would work in the same paths that you're walking on. From here on, okay, so when sightseeing in this town Good. in a misty day, you, you will really me. find why it is so famous and popular all, right. all the time. The, the scenery That's after really rain is. or in the misty morning is more like a Chinese traditional painting rather than a real world. Mm. And it does, that's got that kind of misty rain. You don't, do yeah, you get that, does, that yeah. you know, you know, the rain, do you get that in Bailu Village or is it, is Niawu only? I think it's, well. I, you get the, the sort of the same sort of rain in both, but I do think it looks. I know it's maybe it's emphasized more in the hour, but I could just be me making it up. To be fair, I, I feel like it's a bit more misty. You always take this path, right? Yeah. Um. When you go into the so, mountains, I mean, it could be just the inspiration. But then that that begs here, the question: like, no why didn't Yu Suzuki just water. use the word Fan Huang as the city? Why why did he have to change it to Niawu? I mean, I oh, think a lot of it comes from the, from the Chinese release, yes, which can. obviously hasn't happened, oh, or as far as where hasn't happened. House, and I know there. there's a lot of laws the around there about using real Everyone life locations in China and things like well. that, so maybe that's why the they changed the name. Fish and where the children play. So um, some of the town is on wooden so stilts. Interesting. Yeah, Did you used true. to play in the river too? Ultra uh, in interesting. It mentions about the Great Wall here. The Southern father. Great Wall is a part of the Ming Great do? Wall. We caught fish. Uh, it's a unique we scene here. In Ming day. Dynasty, you the Southern Great Wall kid. was built for preventing yes. the local Han Chinese from the invasion of Miao minority. While nowadays Miao people have become a part of Chinese ethnic groups and get well with Han people. So, Beng Huang Ancient Town is also a place to experience the Chinese ethnic culture. Why do you go to the dark? So that's interesting because they do mention the Ming Dynasty as well, don't they? I think in Shenmue. Like what? Was it just the? Is it just the king? Qing. Qing. King. Ming Ming Dynasty. I was just wondering if the the wall that we get at the end of Shenmue Three, if that is the like. Really? A replica of the what Southern else? Great Wall. I also buy medicines that are part of the Ming Great Wall, that would be interesting. Bear oh, in mind medicines. that Niaosan is the sort of the lead of the South, to. isn't she? So the we Phoenix the leader of the South. It would right. make sense medicines. that it could okay. be the Southern Wall. Yes, wall. Both spring a lot. That's a good. But medicines are you know, you've got a good uh, so link there. Yeah. I see. So it could certainly work. There you go. Um, historical sites, there remains 20 ancient streets, dozens of ancient lanes and passages, and over 200 ancient civil residences here, including Huang Sikiao Castle. Sure. Since we're here. I don't know. I'm just thinking of the castle um, that you get at the end of Shimmer 3. Shenfa. Yes. How far does this forest go? It's all about the village. river, but this is called the oh. Tuo Jiang really River, which isn't the... Is it People called the... Li Jiang River, it's isn't it? How you don't get lost. Li Jiang River, yeah. How do you recognize the path? Which is a real river, isn't it? It is, it is real, yeah, it's real. And there are signs here and they're on the path. Signs? Just on interesting that they keep mentioning the Meow people. Because I know we did get that, that loading screen. And oh, just, uh, Kodai Names just did, um, oh. has had to drop you out of YouTube. Thanks for dropping in. 
Um, I'll see you on the forums. Oh, no problem. Thanks for showing up, man. Thanks for watching. No, for what? Notice. Two hours? Yeah, we haven't finished yet. Smashing. One of them is just yeah, good stuff. Okay. So yeah, I mean that's that's interesting reading. Um, I think Yu Suzuki at least got some of his inspiration from these sort of places. And like yes, the way the bridge looks, I just think he could have copied that into the, here, the, uh, the Verdant Bridge buds, kind of style. It's got groomed. that similar kind of look to it. Let's move on. There will be more flowers ahead. And um, yeah. Silver of Saturn, this town could be a subject for a whole podcast in its. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Some some good information to talk about. That is that photo. Yeah. Well, this is new. Cool. The thing that's is, that like, photo I linked. Yeah. The thing is, this is all sort of photo. It's Everyone new sort of links, isn't it? It's new information. We haven't. Had, where has this been discussed as well? before? Yeah. It hasn't, has it? So it's. I'm surprised. No, I, I I'd say the only person that's probably discussed it is that Shenmue unofficial guy. He's done a lot actually. Shenmue unofficial. If you want a good YouTube channel, some good theories. Shenmue unofficial is really really good. Right, go there, Paddy. Paddy, go there for an on-location podcast. I tell you what, if you can get the BBC or somebody to fund that, I will do it. That's got to be worthy cause, on it? That a BBC trip to fucking. Feng Huang. Yeah, why the hell not? Do a whole documentary on it. I just realised, um, Shemu unofficial. Is Sergi Nest? Oh, is it? Yeah, because, well, the YouTube channel's called youtube.com slash user slash Sergi Nest. Bloody Paddy, Kickstarter it. Let's go. We've got one backer. Sliver of Sand is, 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 is like a backer on a Kickstarter. Uh, Yanni X. Uh, my girlfriend's Cantonese originally from Hong Kong. I once asked her to watch me play Shenmue, explain the symbols and all this stuff. Game throws in Chinese culture. The killer for me was the first opening of Shenmue. There's a storm, the snow changed terrain. That means that the dragon comes when the storm and will change the destiny of a person. Interesting. Shenfa. Yes. Hang on, let me read that again. My girlfriend is Cantonese, originally from Hong Kong. How long does it take to get to the village from here? Explain to me this the symbols is the and all the good stuff the that the game throws you would mix in the Chinese culture. The killer for me was the All first right. opening shot. You can leave the way from storm here. Snow changed yes. the rain. You'll this means that the dragon comes me. with a storm. I know the way. Will change. All right. Destiny person. Wow. See, I love shit like that. that that's quality. I like that. What's wrong? You that, is, really that is really good. cool. That is. Thanks, Yanni, for love. sharing. That's, that's really, really true. good. I'd be interested. Did you get your girlfriend to continue to play through the games, or well, you show her the games? If you showed her like Shamu Two and all this sort of stuff, with the mirrors and the four heavenly beasts and all that sort of stuff. If she's, I mean, obviously she's got to know Chinese law. I see. Now come on. But you've got to think of how. I'm guessing you, Suzuki. Well, I'm not 100%, but obviously the team is Japanese, I would have thought, like, working on the game in, at Sega's headquarters or whatever. I don't think, you know, half the team is Chinese, so I think they had to to physically research all this Chinese background lore, maybe through books, and obviously you should have visited these oh, locations right. and probably right? learned a lot of stuff. But no, I'm fine. Let's hurry on our way. I'd have, have expected a lot of Shenmue's intricate story elements, like what we discussed yeah. in the podcast and what you've mentioned there, to have come from like tired, ancient Chinese there. books or something. I don't know. You know, like Chinese yeah. Bible. Let's go there. <laughs> all right. And they've got, if that's a thing. I mean, they've got all the on-location stuff as well that they've done. It's. I dread to think actually the amount of money they've um, probably Is spent on just the research alone. I yeah, definitely, man. And, know as soon as we get and they've nailed it, really. Mm. You know, if you can't if it like they've that. created something the so specific, the like the weather change at the start of the game, really, and then That'll you know, a, a natural Chinese person, well, your girlfriend there, Yanni X, has picked up on that as like a Chinese buddy mythological theory. What do you mean? Something, the or something that they, they I don't know, is built into their religion. So they must have, finished, <laughs> you know, they must have really took that Chinese 
history and whatever, and, and, you know, really thought about it and. When they get back to the village. I've, like what Yanni X is saying there, I've, I've never, never thought of it. So it's really clever. That's, that's brilliant, actually. And and after that Shinmu 2, when Ryo saves the deer and Shinhara is there, a strong wind is blowing. Tiger Shinhar. comes with the wind and changes yeah. destiny to Shinhara. We can hear the wind blowing throughout the whole walk into the river house. Yeah, that is very true, actually. You can hear the wind the entire way through. Well, this is what I... I said towards the start of the stream where I used to write notes as a kid. I used to, I, I wrote the one where Shenfor says she's sensed that the wind has changed direction and there's going to be a storm coming or whatever, right? Which causes the landslides, doesn't it, eventually? I think Paddy, Paddy's nailed it. It's worthy of a Phantom River Stone blog. Yeah, I'll have to hook you up, Yannick X. <laughs> Get in touch with Switch. Yanni, yeah, stick it on the forums, because that's yeah, that's a really... I don't yeah. think that's ever been discussed. Hmm. Certainly not from my nice recollection. That's really... Stick it on the forums, get that yeah. discussion I mean, going. A lot of stuff in yeah. the past discussed, I but... Do that. You've yeah. got... I mean, I will if I You know, can. you... Well, yes, your girlfriend. <laughs> I was going to say, you, you know someone. Who... Can relate these sort of things, no, elements that they were trying to put into the game. Huh? It's crazy. Uh, the path is branching off again. I told you, you'll be fine if you leave it all to me. This way. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious, really, when you think about it. It's clever, isn't it? He's got a yeah. bloody tiger on the back of his jacket, and I did think, you know, when. Um, because that's what where he gets the white here? tiger key from in Yuanda Zhu's five Yesterday, star corpse room walls. or whatever. He yeah, gets it from his father's key, yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, it's yeah, called yeah. the Chinese room. Bears. It's got a wow scared. inscribed on his, you know, the, the, the white martial arts happened. clothing. That's where he gets the white tiger key from. So, in theory, like I was saying before, you've got. Miao Sun is supposed yes. to be the phoenix. Mm -hmm. Landy's the dragon. Zhang gives Risking Rio the to her snake tortoise key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I could potentially link that to Yuanda Zhu. Maybe Yuanda Zhu is the snake tortoise and the mythological beast bollocks. Perhaps Rio is the white tiger, for all we know. I don't know, or it was. Isn't it dangerous to walk in the mountains alone? Uh, There's nothing dangerous here. I just stay put when there's Interesting, isn't it? it to be fair, if you think about it like that, Iwao could have been the white tiger and, and he's dead now. Really? And Rio could if take you know his place. The mountains yeah. In the forest, you'll realize yeah. yeah, that's that true as well. Again, it just shows how much bloody detail has gone into these games. It's, ridic <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is. I just hope, I hope that this is still in use of his head and it's not like... One of the other many writers that worked on the first two games. Poisonous snake. Thanks, Yanni. He's gonna, yes. Yanni's gonna chuck it all on the forums for us. Good brilliant. stuff, man. I hope, I, I really to hope, read. really hope that gets a good, good discussion going. Because I tell you what, that's. I, I mean, James, you might be able to tell me more because I had a break from the forums for a while, but you've been around the entire time. I don't remember that being discussed before. Lots of poisonous snakes. I don't remember it being discussed. I know there's been a lot of like theories and people, like even like I was saying, the Shemu Forever guy, mm. Shemu Unofficial guy, sorry. He's looked into a lot of like Chinese history and stuff on the stars, stuff on Yin and Yang and that sort of stuff. So maybe he's potentially spoken about it or someone's potentially spoken about it, but it's been that long. It's worthy of another post. And I think if you can, you know, if you can break down each of the topics, individual topics, um, that perhaps your girlfriend might have given you a bit more, a mysterious you know, Chinese folklore, whatever, information on. You know, 2021 it is, you know, this this stuff, doesn't matter when anyone ever <laughs> talked about it or whatever, does it really? It's 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 interesting. Is it with, uh, what I'm trying to say is we picked up a lot of new Does players as well. So, you know, Matt, you haven't heard about it. I've never heard about it, no, as far as I'm aware. No, and this is... It's, really? Considering we think you know, we've dissected these games so much, and yet there is mm. still stuff coming out. 
And Sliver, Sliver as well, I'm, you know, he's an old user yeah. as far as I'm aware, you know. It's new to him, news to him. <laughs> it is really interesting though, just to see some of the... Landslide again. Some of the elements, I mean, we we're still finding path. stuff from the original Shamu game, even today. I'm sorry, Joel. You know, these these things that are just not don't obvious in a sense. You know, we don't all know Chinese folklore. We don't all know you know, every every little minute detail. So it just it does it does em emphasize like just bridges no the gaps choice, between this, this, this information. Alright. I'd love to I'll see those research here. archives. I really would. Yeah. You Probably can the do size it. of my room alone. I'd love to see those scripts as well, you know, the the script that Peter managed to get by back in the Shamo 3 Kickstarter. Yanni X is just asking you a question, uh James. Uh I think I was just saying just obviously just get as much down as you can just you know if you've got it's just been really interesting to see like every little piece of information that you, your girlfriend mentioned and if there's anything like you never got around to, to asking it it'd be interesting to, to do that as well like the four heavenly beasts I mentioned and see what she thinks about that you know, when you encounter that again. sort of stuff in the Let's follow another path. Uh, Let's do that. in the second game, I'd, I'd be interested actually to know. You know, I was speaking about Tentai and Gentai and Entai. <laughs> <laughs> are those are those the names of the four heavenly beasts? But like in Chinese or or somewhat sort of like Chinese related, because we know Entai is supposed to be Niao Sun, because it's the phoenix. Is that literally like Entai, like Phoenix Beast? And then you've got Tentai, is that like Snake Tortoise Beast? If that makes sense. Oh, it's some consistency. They, 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 pr they, pronounce herbs. they pronounce herbs the same way in Shenmue 3. Herbs. Herbs. Is this the scene? Is this where she kisses him? No, no, no. Nice to see you, Sergio Kent, by the way. Um, but there's consistency there as well. She, uh, uh, she I think picks, that, she, that's the pre-scene, isn't it? The pre, the pre-scene because you pick those herbs there. I think if you, if you pick the right path and them in, we'll end up going right. right. So I don't know. I can always go backwards. Hi, Sergio Nest. Cool. Welcome. There you go. <laughs> Popped up. Sergio Nest, are you Shemu Forever? Uh, Shemu Unofficial. Sorry. Uh, I've literally just figured that out. Sliver of sand, thank uh, you for dropping in. Always appreciated. Let's turn back. Oh, cheers, man. All right. See you later. So fascinating. Yeah, we've, we've learned some really interesting stuff from Yanni X. Yanni X, I'm going to ask more questions. I've just started living with her. Oh, yeah, he's, he's you go. Uh, he's, there you go. Oh. Shenmue Unofficial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great video. So, Shenmue Unofficial, we, we were talking about your channel, man, about how you've gone into the yin and, y yin and yang stuff how you you've, you've got a whole podcast sat kind of episode on the feng huang area that's kind of like niawu or you know niawu could be based on feng feng huang or whatever uh yanni x came up i don't know if you can still see the history of the chat it should be it should be there but he was switch. mentioning he was mentioning about his his girlfriend's chinese and I was wondering if this sort of information had cropped up before something you'd discovered in your podcast episode things. Uh, in case it's not there, I'll read it to him. Uh, it says, guys, I want to tell you something really badly. My girlfriend is Cantonese, originally from Hong Kong, and I once asked of her to watch me play Shenmue and explain to me the symbols and all of the good stuff that the game throws at you when mixing the Chinese culture. The killer for me was the first opening in Shenmue, so obviously the intro to Shenmue. So there was a storm and the snow changed to rain, which, you know, a lot of the characters speak about this. You know, Ryo actually says that as a question to, you know, the day the, st the snow changed to rain. And apparently this means that the dragon comes with the storm and will change the de destiny of the person. 
which kind of like led us into this bit of a a wow. We've never heard of the at least the intro to the game being represented in such a fashion. So, and what else did he say? Actually, said. And after that, in Shemu 2, when Ryo saves the deer, in Shemfo, is there. Uh, in Shemfo, there is a strong wind blowing. The tiger comes with the wind and changes the, changes the destiny of Shemfo. We can hear the wind blowing throughout the whole walking section until they arrive at her house. And this explains the tiger on Ryo and the dragon clothes on Landi. So yeah, yeah. Again, uh, Shemu unofficial Sugi nest. You didn't know about that. It's a so that, yeah. There you go, Yannix. Yannix. It's, it's definitely a, <laughs> a topic. Be, point. I'm gonna be really intrigued to see that topic when it comes up because I think that gets a really good discussion going because it hasn't been talked about before. What the. This is really good stuff, guys. Like, this is the kind of stuff you know can create a podcast episode on its own. Really, can't it, it just talk talking about this sort of stuff? It's really good. Love it. Absolutely love it. And like I say, I, I hope, I really, really hope this is still in the plans of the game, the series. I hope this is in Yu Suzuki's head, or at least written down somewhere. But then this is this is where he he should hire continuity guys. The rocks are like bridges, and many are connected. There are many places. No, in all, in all seriousness, like taking all joking out. Um, too when I thanks, Paddy, for dropping in. Appreciate you. The scenery looks popping in, dropping mind. some links in there. Get a Shenhua home Thanks safe. Thanks for moderating us a little bit. Yeah. Banning all those pricks as well. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's narrow, but I think we can cross it. Get yeah, Shenhua home safe. <laughs> oh, I was going to chuck her off a cliff. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Right, the... if we fall. Oh, oh nice sorry. to see you. Is it Holly Deer or Holly Deer? I can't. Fall. Sorry. I've... Okay. Been on stream for nearly two and a half hours, so my pronunciation's gone, gone completely wrong. Nice Holiday. to see you and Holiday. welcome. Nice to see you. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with YouTube, man, but YouTube has only just done the the herb scene that's, on my screen. That's ridiculous. I'm gonna have ridiculous, to look, which is why I, I thought for a moment then you'd just got the proper. I'm gonna have to look. Herbs. I'm gonna have to look into that because. Oh, I, oh I've, I've just killed him. He's dead. Just refreshed it, so it might have. Caught up. Uh, Retro Godfather says so much depth. I'm learning new things all the time. I think we all are. That's the beauty of Shamu. I think. Yeah, you know, twenty odd years, and we're still learning new stuff. It's, it blows my mind, man. Honest. There's no other game series that you can play thirty times, and someone will say something in a chat room somewhere. And it'll just change a whole perspective on an element of the game. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? But then it just it's ridiculous. You can see where the money's gone in the research and everything. It's 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 crazy, isn't it? And I just yeah. But they they they, they created the the game so well. You know what I mean? And this someone can knock out a game. You know. I don't know what what what's kind of had the budget of Shemu, or at least when they created. What did they do? They, they created the Saturn version, Shemu 1 and 2, on, what was it, 39 million or something? Yeah, it was butchered, $47 million, dollars, I think, was what was quoted at the yeah. developers' conference. So what game these days creates $47 million? Do you know what I mean? It's Is that like GTA 5 or something? Was well, that $47 million? I, I don't know what the budget of some of these games are, like Assassin's Creed and things like that, which yeah, have a lot of historical stuff in them where they'd have to do that sort of research. So I don't know what their yeah. budgets are, but I don't... But none of them are as detailed as Shenmue. Okay. And that goes fucking... That Sega mobile game that they spent $30 million on. 
<laughs> don't get me started on that. That's a... Exactly, so, but that, that's not far off of Shenmue. I know, and if yeah, they'd have thrown that money at Shenmue, ah, oh, right, that's a podcast yeah. episode on itself. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so they it probably wouldn't have made back the thirty million. <laughs> no, pro- maybe not with, Shen- but... with Shenmue, but at least it would have been yeah, amazing for let's us. Serginess, what yeah. I mentioned in my Landy episode is that the storm it's during way, the right? night that Landy kills yeah. a while symbolised Landy's Good. power because in let's Asian go. culture, dragon are, dragons are associated with storms. But that also links to what the Annie X is saying as well. Yeah, yeah. The the storm changed the snow, and the storm. What did he say again? <clears throat> but the storm links. Uh, the dragon comes with a storm, yeah, and will change the destiny of a person. So they really thought about. Landy has to be the dragon. He's come. We have to have a storm. That takes place because Landy's there. He's changing the destiny of Rio. Rio goes on this journey because of the dragon. What is this? Um, what is this meets up with. Well, I was going to say the Phoenix. It is an ancient Chinese sign. He's carrying the Phoenix mirror. Off. Go with the one who holds the Phoenix. Then find the proof. The path, which is what I'm we get in a minute. And you can see it in the really? Shen Moon Online trailer. You're the quite right, actually. From here now. Let's go. Oh yeah, Follow the. Me. When when yeah. Landy pops up or whatever, and the dragons in the sky, the, mm. the clouds come, don't they? Go storming. Bloody hell. Yes. Mm. It's scary the amount of research that's gone into this, and the amount of like the, that stone the, lion in Hong Kong too. The the, the, sort of the effort to get that accuracy. In China. It's ridiculous. I do understand why why people would want hey, to Carlos, have man. seen say Shenmue Three on the Dreamcast, but well, I think that's, that's because they the think. Path. That if yes. it was on the Dreamcast, it would have carried on in this style. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? If if, if we'd have got a, a third game, I say two years after Shenmue Two, you'd have expected those elements to have spirits. continued into the third game. I remember now. You know, if I if Shenmue had been successful the like we all wanted Kong. it to be, and the Dreamcast had carried on or whatever, and maybe Sega also, made not the Dreamcast Two, but the next console, you know. And yes. Shemmy would have followed on that, or even if it was successful on the Xbox and it, it carried on the Xbox, and we got a Shemmy 3 on the Xbox, original Xbox, and then maybe Shemmy 4 on the Xbox 360, whatever. If the series had just carried on in order of time, like every other bloody series that there is, you'd have expected these elements to, to have continued, and you know, this, this, it, it would have. Kept its authenticity is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, Whereas Shenmue Three kind of it deviated a little bit away from it because obviously Yu Suzuki's working with a smaller like. team, smaller budget. He's got to cut corners. You know, perhaps the people that wrote the first two games in such a way um, didn't con- kind of continue that al- those elements into Shenmue Three. Um, so if it had carried on on the Dreamcast, Xbox, or whatever, I think we would have seen uh, these story kind of plot points things develop a lot more, and a lot of like Shenmue One officials theories and stuff probably would have come into play a lot more in in that kind of saga of the series. But what we've got now is kind of like a more. Do you know what I mean? It's it's kind of like the Shemu Three we've got is kind of a bit more. What would you say? No, um, the roofs are tiled, and the windows and doors have glass. Dumbed yeah. down, maybe. We perhaps a, a more dumbed down village. version of that. Really? And perhaps Once Shenmue 4 is going to be like a dumbed down version of... No you know, it's not really going to be the original oh. games that we would have got if he would have made his 16 chapter series that he, he originally oh, planned for. The two paths. Because the now two obviously paths. money is a factor. Uh, the engine is a factor, time is a factor, team size is a factor. They haven't got 300 people working on the game now, they've got 20, 30, 40, whatever is at Wisenet. Um, so obviously he's got to cut corners and perhaps like the really, really detailed aspects that we dig into aren't going to crop up again, for all we know. I don't know. Just quickly, left or right? Uh, so on a chat probably, but I, w- I think it's left. I think it's left, but I'm not 100%. So 
It's all right, Sergi Ness, with my with our investments in cryptocurrency. When I'm a multi-millionaire, about two hundred million pounds, I will invest in Shenmue Four, Five, and Six. <laughs> Please do, mate. Um, <laughs> right, chat, left or right? It's left, isn't it? Is that right? Because I'm thinking in my head. I always think take the right path, but then I, I, I think. It's not the right path. That doesn't even make sense. No. Yanni, Yanni I think it's it is left. Saying left. Any, any, any takers? Any, anybody else? Because I'm going left. Otherwise, I need to do the other. Quite nest. Okay, is it left do. or right? I'm going to smash in the other competition as well while we're here. Just bear with me. So it doesn't for... auto select, does it? No, it's all right. Uh, Rio t-shirt, start giveaway. So, right, everybody, exclamation mark, raffle. You will win yourself. You should just pop in the chat now. One of these extra large Rio Hazuki t-shirts. Yeah, so says left, anyway. I did think it was left. Right, we're going left. I've got, like, a weird... Let's go this way. A weird uh, yeah. <laughs> way of, like, answering that question is, like take the right path because it's the right path but it's not the right path these are dandelions <laughs> dandelions good choice so I forgot right about this left. scene I forgot about this scene yes. oh well, this is the dandelion scene yeah okay. so how do you get the the and this is semi kiss scene this is consistent though isn't it because the dandelions raise it talks about it's like a hint at her powers isn't it yeah when I was yeah, small. well, of course, yeah. Which is then hinted at again in, in Shenmue 3. It's right. I think the problem we've got now, Shenmue 3 feels like it wasn't fleshed out because the story's still ongoing. Mm. So, like, if you get Shenmue 4, you get Shenmue 5, and this sort of stuff crops up again. It makes Shamu 3 better in a way because Beautiful, at the moment we're like, we feel a bit deflated because, yeah. you know, nothing it's like this kind of happened like in Shamu 3. But if it happens in Shamu 4 and 5, then Shamu 3 feels on. better, if that makes yeah, sense, yeah. because. Re Retro Godfather, this just popped up in the chat. Apparently, GTA 5 had a budget of 265 oh, million oh, US oh. dollars. Yes? Jesus! That is mental, isn't it? <laughs> How do the villagers just live? Just so everybody's aware. So is that, is that the, um, the Guinness World Book of Records like, most expensive Why game these it? days? It's it got to be on it. It must be now. For people to ride on. At this rate, Yanni X is the only one winning a Rio t-shirt because he's the only person who's entered. I can, but I'm not too good at it. Close the competition. Really? <laughs> close, close, close. I wanted to give it, around let him give it to his girlfriend. <laughs> I always wished I could do that. She deserves some Shemu merchandise after that. I wasn't really allowed to. I never rode on a horse before. Yeah, that's crazy, that is you. I heard that the people in town riding cars. It just shows. I don't I don't know if that's cars? like Um I got you know that the budget really? is in, uh, inflated because of twenty twenty. You think so? Oh. Well, when did GTA five come out? It was like five years ago, wasn't it? It's longer than that, it was PS three. can get you there faster. PS3, yeah, was it? Right. Yeah, it's gone across three, that... technically three generations. It's the end of the PS3. Is it on the 360? Oh, good question. I can't remember. It probably was. Yo, the village is this way. Yeah. Shenfa. Uh, Yanni X says you can close the competition and open it next time. More people enter. <laughs> People don't enter it. That's that's their problem. I wonder what by the village looks like. <laughs> a quiet, small village surrounded it's by the mountains. It's difficult because space extra large, as well. I, I've, I haven't tried one on there extra large, but the medium's quite a big medium. There. They were built long ago. Really? Have For what is that? The yes. this is the the yeah. white shirt. Yeah, yeah the Rio T-shirt. Yeah, I had that on earlier. Actually, the the white medium. This is interesting. She's talking about an old lady in the village. She's talking about the nobles and the emperor and the treasures. Must be Saudi. Saudi, yeah. Saudi, yeah, isn't it? 
That's why they built the walls. So they had treasures and rare items, so naturally they were what was that sorry? They were nobles. How does the poem go? Okay, there's a poem in the village left by the nobles. How does the poem go? Green trees of Gui create a forest to the south of the lake. What does it mean? The river is a blue sash of silk. The hills are hairpins of jade. What does it mean? The deep forests of Guilin or Gui and are the south of the lake. The borders of the Li Yang. Li Jiang. I like this poem. Even with my eyes closed, I can see the landscape of Guilin. Really? Shenfa. Yes. So this is what she's talking about. Her dreams, is she? And talk about the village and the history and the if poems and while, what I would assume is Aldi, yeah, and, the, and the history and all of those sorts of things. So I know Shenmue 3 gets a little bit of flack for not being night. consistent, the but actually they talk about the, the, yeah, the emperor, the envoy, what all this sort of stuff. It's mentioned in Shenmue created. too. It's here. Yeah, well, in fact, you, you actually picked up on... Um, you know, when we were talking about, I think it was Oishi-san in the antique shop? Yes. When he was talking about the the Phoenix Mirror, he was saying he read a book, or, you know, story, Chinese history, where the Emperor had these Phantom Stone River mirrors commissioned for a key to the treasure, perhaps, he might have said. I can't, I can't remember the scene. Well, then we were saying, like, how, how crazy is that, that the, he's talking about that in Shemi 1, and Ryo actually only really finds out that story taking place in Shemi 3 in Bailey Village, you know? They, they, they have continued some of the the actual stories and, you know, the trends and stuff from, you know, that, that was pretty crazy. That was a good find, that was, I thought, you know, that... In, in Shemi 1, we, f we find out something that doesn't actually take place until Shemi 3. What is that sound? I just wonder, with, with the it limited like budget the that they had, whether they had to I be really, really picky the with what they is sort of waterfall? moved on. No. Oh, Zol yeah. Zola Zola has entered as well. Thank and you. What is that sound? I don't know. He won Do the first show, didn't he? He did. <laughs> or I could be for two for two. Nice. We're building up your wardrobe here. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, I, I, I do like that they've carried on some story elements, at least. I mean, for all we know, that could have could just been like a coincidence in, in the design of the game, but we hope that Yu Suzuki's gone back, he's, he's watched mm -hmm. some of the scenes from Shenmue 1, he's seen those mirror cutscenes, you know, when Rio finds the mirror in the basement and he takes it to the antique shop. You know, we hope he's seen that scene again and it's reminded him that that is still an ongoing story element. Yeah, man. Just I'm, I'm just watching YouTube. It's so far. <laughs> I, f I feel so... It must be like 10 minutes behind. I feel... I f the guys on YouTube, I do... Yeah, you know, I do apologise because it shouldn't be that far behind and it is something I will look into post um, post stream and if it means I have to swap us look, over to restream or something so, it's, so it links up better I, I will do so um, but thank it's you it's literally man I'm watching now it's it's literally just talking about the old lady now yes yeah, so that's a good no, four, three four spoke. minutes behind us yeah so yeah guys on YouTube uh, yeah Made this water thank you for joining i appreciate it and i will look into it because you guys should get the same experience that everybody gets on twitch it annoys me that you're not um thank you joanne for dropping into the raffle as well much appreciated let's go yes it's um so i i was talking to or was it Romain Mahu on um, Twitter, Shenfei. actually, yes. the, oh, yeah. in the yeah. week? And he was saying that actually Shenmue 3 he said your father was sick. will probably be appreciated more cough. in a few years because of A, what it did in terms worry. of what the yeah, night, establishing the core team, elements and all the rest of it. And also with Shenmue 4 alongside back, it, it's better. hard to judge Shenmue 3 until you have a Shenmue 4. 
Because in my opinion, Shenmue working. One on yeah. its own doesn't. It's a great game. Love it. Yeah, That's it's that homely, yeah. worldly yeah. feel. It's fantastic. But, but it doesn't sometimes. drive the story on too much. But Shenmue Two really sort of yeah, drives it on. So what you'd yeah. hope is Shenmue Four is what Shenmue Two was to Shenmue One. Really. Yeah, that must be inconvenient. And then, and you, then you think, can judge I it fairly. I think they've got that. They've, got, they've, well, they've actually better. got the engine yes. and the elements in play to so create a Shenmue 4 that, you know, does the same thing like Shenmue 2 did to Shenmue 1. They've got it. Shenpa. It's all there. I know. It's all there. It's difficult, obviously. You had the, the interview with Ezra, in who obviously speaks yes. to Yu Suzuki. It must be very inconvenient I mean, when someone gets ill. Yes. Regular, perhaps, you know, is a good word yeah. to, to, you know, the, the consistency of how he, he talks to Yu Suzuki, but the way he was talking to you was like, Yu Suzuki wants to start fresh, and he he knows that there was a lot of stuff wrong with Shemu 3, and he wants to correct those wrongs, so he wants to kind of start fresh, which, I mean... Fair enough, I mean, oh. if, if you've got so the budget the to do so, then by all means, you know, create a Shemmy 4 that you want to you create, you know, Yu Suzuki can, he can go to Unreal 5 or whatever the, the next engine is with ray tracing, and if he wants to restart the whole game again, if he's got the budget to do so, then, you know, obviously we'll back him, but I think he's built a very good framework with Shemmy 3. He'd be daft not to just use those elements and just continue that. A heavy just, you know, just improve it a little bit. Like, you know, if he, he wants to make the graphics a little bit better, work. and he's got the the engine and the means to do that, I, I'd agree oh, with by you. By means, you know, be really, just before I sort of address yeah. that point, but James. As um, long as he focuses on the on the story and stuff, then we're in. We're in, aren't we? That's what it needs to do. I'm going to address that quickly, yeah. James. Um, just say hello to. Um, Jet Set Radio Future eight three nine three. Welcome on Twitch. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think I've seen you in yeah. chat before, so welcome. So I'm going to draw back on your point, James. That obviously, Shenmue Four needs to sort of use the core systems, use and, and hammer in on the story. Yeah, completely agree with you. Completely agree with you. And what I and I don't want to sound disrespectful to WiseNet Yu Suzuki because Yu Suzuki is is, is massive is in gaming there. in terms of being a trailblazer, setting the standard. But with Shenmue Four, we don't need to, we don't need to set the standard. But I need to go we don't to need to be village. a trailblazer. We don't need you to be groundbreaking. We just need I to hit to the story you. hard because the budget um, doesn't allow us to do much bit. more. Let's use Please. that core system. Use those elements that are really, really good in Shenmue 3. Oh, Polish them up. Right. Hit the story Good. hard. And I Follow promise me. you, I soon. absolutely promise you, and I will I will Shenpa. go to the grave saying Follow this, if they do that, ahead. Shenmue 4 will further. be an amazing game. It really, really will. Shenpa. Yeah, 100%. Come on, let's get to my house. We Yanni X is saying Shenmue 3 is okay. good, but you need to play it again and look into the details. I remember I expected too much when it comes to the story first playthrough. Yeah, but when you look at the look at the intricacies, it's there, isn't it? And uh, JS um, RF eight three nine three, it did veer off a bit, but it's establishing the core elements. And looking at this Shenmue tree, actually, tree? one of the theories Shenmue. we were talking about in our podcast oh. episode four is yep. there has to be Shenmue. more than one Shenmue tree. Every year, in my opinion, I will mention something actually. I've thought about it since. Really? If you watch this scene in a minute, you know when she starts doing the flashback with the when she's a child. Mm. In fact, I could see it on Here we go. the live stream. In. It's yeah. going now. Okay. So the actual crib basket thing that she's in. You look at that, there's like four ropes attached to... So it's not a swing, you know, when we, we spoke about in the podcast. I think she looks year. about eight, maybe, in the second flashback. Mm. And it's that, an, an actual swing. Mm. Mm. In this particular scene, she's in a basket. A beautiful flower. I know. We will name so, child Shenfa. If you remember, I was saying that this has to be the same tree because the swing is exactly the same. 
you know, it's on the same branch, whatever, but actually when you look at it again, it, it's not the exact same swing. She's in a basket here, she's in like a, a crib that swings. It's got four, four ropes that attach. And in fact, I think we actually came to the conclusion that that background there that you've just seen is Lu Wang. Yeah. The place that's, that's depicted on the, the scroll in Shen yeah. Fu's house, I think that's the at least in Shen Mi That's the conclusion we came to, I think, on the podcast. And also, you look at the building yeah. that's in the background. And that makes sense. It's that that, that building, because bearing in mind the Verdant Bridge was constructed in 1910, from when the mirrors were done. Yeah. That building is consistent with, because we did our research for the podcast, it's consistent with yeah. buildings at that time. So... It, it, there has to be, in my in my opinion, there has to be more than one Shenmue tree. They're, ch they're broadly speaking cherry trees, aren't they? Rio's got one in his garden. We've got the Shenmue tree here. You've got the tree oh, the in, thing, in, in in the spring in Bailu Village as well. So we know January there's, there's spring, yeah. yeah. There's we know there's three of them there. So there has to be another one. In my that, that's my opinion. See, the Happy problem they've got is. It confuses a little bit in Shemu 3 because in Shemu 2 they're talking about this tree as the Shemu tree. So in our heads we're thinking this is the Shemu tree. So when they mention in Shemu 3 in Turnery Spring that Shem, that, that tree that Shemu 4 are sitting under, there's, there's like a tiny, I don't know if Rio says it or Shemu 4 says it, but they mention the Shemu tree again, but it's a different tree. So, because it was such a, a minor mention, and it was like a passing comment, that's kind of speculated now, at least at least between me and you, that that could be a translation error. Because we don't know. No. You get to the end of the game, Rio says something about, that's where we found the scroll, you know what I mean? When he, he's meant to say, that's the place we're heading to next, or that's where we're going to head to now, the Cliff Temple. So, because of that... We think there's a translation error there. There could be a translation error in Turnery Spring with the Shamu tree. We don't know. Um, Yanni X. Well, here you go. So, so this this yeah. cutting in here, see, it's a two. So, so I, I was saying, I think in the podcast that it's the same swing yeah, on the same yeah, branch. Yeah. It's not actually the same swing because in that first cutscene, she's in a cradle with four ropes. This is a two roped actual proper swing now, like a child swing. So it could look like the same branch, but like I, I, I'm thinking now, it could be two separate trees, like you said. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of it. I mean, I, I, if I'm proved wrong, I'm proved wrong, but I'm convinced yeah, of but, it. I mean, man, we came, we did come to the conclusion when we were talking about the. You can see it behind Shenfar here. There's like a, a, a picture on the wall of. Every she's year, she's talking about it. That's the Yuan. Yes, yes, she is. is this and in Shemu three, the they even bring it back up. Yes. They're looking at a picture, or or we she, she says she, in her dreams she really? can picture. Um, she can picture in her dreams a dream she's had previously, where a mother and father are looking down on her as a child and a baby, and. The, the name in it, the name in a Shen So it's yeah. she's she's it's retelling really that bloody dream yeah. scene. What an arcade is? She doesn't know what games are, what I capsule really toys are. Perhaps I think like Rio does bring it up. Although we weren't and then in Shenmue Three, Bailu Village has got its own arcade, so that kind of doesn't really work. Yeah. But I do understand that again. You know, they need to have mini game elements, mm. something fun for the player to interact with. Soon. And with it being a, like a kind of like a fan created game in a sense with the right? Kickstarter, yeah. a lot of fans wanted want an arcade created game in a sense with right? the Kickstarter, yeah. a lot of fans I wanted want an arcade. For me. I think it comes I'm into. Please wait. Why don't you rest <sighs> while I make dinner? It. Had we had Shenmue three immediately after Shenmue yes. two. Thank you. I think Bailu Village would have been more rustic. Would have been different. I think it. Yep. But I also think people have expected it because it was implied that way. Whereas if you did it, bear in mind we're 15 years down the line here, 20 years mm -hmm. by the time it's released, you can't have a rustic village with nothing in it other than... Because people will get... It's, people will be, it's implied that people will get bored. 
So I can see why they did it. I mean, it depends on how much of the game they've been planning originally to do in Barley Village. Mm. So I think you mentioned before, I don't think Barley Village would have been fleshed out as much because if we're coming from the Dreamcast era, Rio arrives at Chenfor's house, he goes to the caves, that's where the game ends. Mm. I could imagine them going yeah. straight from the caves, maybe nice. back to Chenfor's house and then to Barley Village, but... I would have thought in my head, at least on this on the Dreamcast or whatever, Looks really Bailey good. Village would have been just a few small that huts, perhaps a couple of characters, you know, really, really rural, like it was making out it, it was going to be. What's this meat? Uh, Shenfar's home, you know, a few people they've never really mountain. seen outside of China. Oh, really? you know, she was making out she's never been. She's never yeah, seen. It is. In fact, I don't think she even knew where Japan was. I think Rio mentions he's from Japan, and she's like, "Where's that kind and of he thing?" Has, and he has to explain. You know I mean? It's over the sea. It's it's you know it's yeah. from the east. And then she starts reciting the poem, doesn't she? Quietly. Exactly. And he's like, "What are you talking about?" So when you get when you get to Bailu Village in Shenmue Three, it doesn't home. feel the same. It doesn't feel Can like it's that rural and cut off that no one knows outside of the village if you know what I mean it's, it feels like they had to make a few sacrifices to make the game fun mm. by adding you know your panda market area with the 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 arcade the gambling games I think someone did mention I don't know if it was on the forums but it would have been better if they'd have kept that till Niawu if they did like kept Bailu village really rural and just you know a few characters conversations story maybe they, they still had the temples and the the abandoned temple and that sort of stuff but they didn't have any gambling or mini games and then when you get to to Niawu, that kind of makes sense because it's like a bit more cityscape upmarket kind of thing it's going to look at the chat again very quickly um, yeah, yeah. oh wait i'll wait for this scene then yeah i know i know you you're doing the items with the, the Shamu branch and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we've talked about all of these in the podcast as well. Yeah. Um, these are cracking scenes, these are. Yeah, these are top notch. Just looking at the chat very quickly. So, Jem, JSRF8393 was the team worked on Shamu through the same we worked on previous games. Some were, some weren't. Um, the original writers, That's another topic again, isn't it? Yeah, the original writers were touted as coming back for Shenmue 3, but actually when you look at the credits, they're slightly different. Um, some of the music, are Ryuji, who wrote a lot of the music for Shenmue 1 and 2, didn't, who was touted yeah. as coming back for Shenmue 3, but didn't. So it's... See, I don't know, it's... That's, uh, I don't know what happened there. We. I don't. Obviously, if you, if you, if you can get your interviews to work to that stage where you can ask <laughs> what happened but you know that that's the that's the problem with Shenmue 3 these again it's consistency and it's not just consistency in the story it's consistency in the team mm. you know we're led to believe in the kickstarter that we were going to get Ryu, you know Ryuji uh, we were going to get the original writer or one of the original writers and like you said there in the credits it's a different writer that's credited so is that why some of the story elements felt off? Mm. You know, and what actually happened behind the scenes that I'd love Ryu, to know. Uh, you know, Ryuji, he was streaming Shemu 1 and 2 quite happily, but he didn't want to stream Shemu 3 for some reason. You know, I, I don't know what happened behind the scenes. I, I hope that it's not like a, a falling out kind of thing and it was more. This is embroidered. <laughs> Again budget budget maybe we don't have enough budget to pay you for, to make some more songs is it okay if we use some of your old songs but then you know, ryuji felt a bit disappointed because he was expecting a resurgence of his you know his career and you know working back on shenmue and then suddenly he's he's, he's cast to the side again because they just want to use some of the stuff that he worked on already you know what i mean they've, they've got no use for him because they don't want to pay him to create more songs, perhaps that's what happened. Possibly, and he's got a bit of a sore spot for that, I don't know. Possibly, I mean, I think... I think it's... It, Ryuji's passionate about Shenmue. If you ever go back and watch his streams, and, and I'd recommend you do, I know, I mean, yeah. a lot of it's in Japanese, but to be fair to him, he, he, he does try to communicate English as well. And his yeah. streams are really, really good. They're good fun. There's a lot of fans from all over the world, and it's worth looking at. 
So it's disappointing, I think, that he wasn't more involved because he actually, he really cares. But, I mean, we don't know what's happened behind the scenes. I don't want to prejudge anything because it, we're not we're not privy to that information. I think what uh, JSRF is saying is, is it a letdown? Maybe, but I don't want to jump on that because we don't know what's happened behind the scenes. I'd love to know. And although James and I are privileged that we own a dojo and we've been lucky, certainly in my part, to speak to people involved with Shenmue 3, I don't want to jump to conclusions of what may or may not have happened without speaking to the people who may uh, that have been involved. I, I get the disappointment in yeah. it. I really, really do. Yeah. But I don't want to discredit the external factors that have had a, may have had an impact on that, is what I'm saying. But in all... Yeah, especially when you, you don't actually know what happened. I mean... Exactly. You assume it's you sh assume it's kind of negative because, you know, I, I know Nathan24 and a few people in the chat were expecting Ryuji to stream Shemu 3 and continue, mm. and he didn't want to. So that kind of, again, gives you the this kind is... of like... Something bad might have happened behind the scenes that he, he kind of doesn't want to do Shemu three, but until you actually know these these intricate details first hand, you you can't judge anything. You know, you can you can slap a clickbait headline onto anything these days, can't you? So yeah, uh, I, mean, I don't know. But what it does make for is it does make for good discussion. I I I, I welcome these sorts of discussions because we. It's interesting. I find this stuff fascinating. I it's really, really do. Yeah. And like JSRF is bringing up some really good points here and about what could have gone on behind the scenes. And long, long I think you've been, yeah, you've been very fair in the comments you're making it. because these are comments that we're yeah. all thinking at the end of the day. No. Um, and there may have well, been. Well, you think the whole Kickstarter was, was like a miscommunication? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? As soon as Awesome awesome Japan came involved, and you know. A lot of fans have just got these such stupidly high expectations that any little thing, and especially the media, the media at the time when during the Kickstarter were picking up on fucking everything, weren't they? Like we did an episode, like I mentioned before. I mentioned before there was a group of people that were like even picking up on the camera pans into Shenfar's arse. Do you know what I mean? And the the lake of the lake of lanterns. The lanterns or whatever the you know the the fireflies, isn't it? Fireflies. Yeah, exactly. They were picking up on just some of the camera pans going and making a laugh out about it, making a joke about it, making Yu Suzuki loves cute girls or something was the headline or something because of something he he might mention in an interview. And just headlines and clickbait was like so high up and you know the media was just really doing a disservice to the series um and this comes on uh, to a, a point james that yeah Sergio has said it perfectly I, I completely agree with what you said because it's true yeah it's just just doing such a disservice to the series you know the series has created the open world genre you know, you've got people that are giving bloody Assassin's Creed 10 out of 10 or something, perhaps. And then jumping on Shenmue and, like, insulting it and, you know, insulting Yu Suzuki, the creator, just because of... They're just trying every little thing just to make Shenmue a clickbait headline. Which, when we... You know, everyone in the chat knows Shenmue's an, a niche game. It's always been a niche series. You know, it's like a Marmite game. It's got that... that connotation that it's like a marmite it does yeah absolutely pretty sane either either you love it or you hate it there's like no real in between and i feel like a lot of the big media names at the time within the kickstart period at least like the marmite people <laughs> you know the <laughs> the bad connotation I'm, people i'm gonna pick and up. we're trying to just just really throw Shemu under the bus really weren't they yeah I, i'm gonna pick up on jess uh, RF point is miscommunication. There was. I, I, I get what you're saying as well because for all that clickbait bollocks, and it was, yeah. let's be honest, yeah, it, was. it was bollocks. The, the Kickstarter didn't address it early. It took too long. The, the communication wasn't good enough. We, I mean, Cedric talked about this in an interview when I interviewed him before Christmas in 2020. 
And he was quite honest about it. He said, look, there was a miscommunication in the Kickstarter. It could have been managed better. But at the same time, I don't want to throw Austin Japan under the bus because yeah. there is, the, the project, the scale of this project was was massive. And I, I, I'm not going to name names because it's unfair, but one of the, the guys who worked for Austin Japan now works for, for WiseNet and is an absolute asset in terms of link between the community and WiseNet. So I think that just proves from 2015 to 2021. So there's been a six year period sure. there. So Hello. it just shows the... Good morning. Because you've got That's kind right of like Austin awesome Japan, like the new life? new boys in town kind of thing with mm. the Kickstarter. You know, I don't think they expected the kind of project that they were going to tackle at the time. You know, you got Awesome Japan came in mm. to try and manage the Kickstarter, try and manage the communication, try and manage the the messages that everyone was going to throw at them. And I know myself from, you know, creating Shemi World, how stressful and you know you're getting messages left, right, and centre, and you're trying to you're trying your best to appease everyone. And I just feel like. Perhaps they didn't understand that at the time. I, I don't think they realised what they were getting themselves in for. I think it was... Uh... And I don't think they knew enough about the series themselves as well to be able to answer or... We mentioned this before in the Kickstarter. Was it Shemphar they were naming as Sweet as Sugar Shemphar or whatever? You know, that, that's... That kind of phrasing isn't anything that a Shemu fan would expect to hear. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So hearing that was like kind of like a they they thought they were doing good by saying like you know you're definitely going to see the sweetest you know you're going to see Shemphar as sweet as sugar. She's going to look amazing. She's going to be exactly how you envisioned her. But as soon as they said sweet as sugar, we were all thinking like you know what's this guy on about? You know who's writing this? You know it, it just felt very amateur at the time. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is over the, the five or six year period, I think they really understood the series then. They really started to, to understand what... I, th I think they, they, they got more professional as the years went on. And that's probably why you'll find in the, the earlier Kickstarter topics and discussions and updates were quite rushed, felt quite rushed, felt... You know, quite um, you know, un uneducated as as far as Shenmue was concerned. And then later on, as we got some later Kickstarter updates, and perhaps even in you know those those periods of time where no one was saying anything at all, you know, we got like six months without an update. I think they finally realised that it's probably best for them to not say anything at all, because <laughs> every time they said something, the media was jumping on. A certain fan base was jumping on to every little minute detail that they were, they were saying. So if, if you know whoever was writing those updates was saying like "sweet as sugar, chamois," that wasn't happening anymore. If you know what I mean. And uh, hello there, <laughs> Light Wind Dragon. Yeah, nice to see Light Wind Dragon. Which is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, Andrew Lamb is his name. Sorry. Took me a second there to think about you. You know the the cosplayer. It was um, Bayonetta oh, yes. cosplay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. In fact, he came to um, the dojo meetup, didn't he? In twenty was that eighteen, nineteen? Nineteen. It was just for the release of three. Because I had the I had, I remember I brought my PC down because we had the demo going. We had competitions go. I'd love to do another one. Oh, what's my nickname mm. on the forums? Oh, oh man. Oh, okay. Man. Yes, yes, we have met before. Good to see you. Um, I've met him. Welcome. I've met him in, um, me, and, me and Paddy were in Coco Ichibania <laughs> in London. And I think me and Paddy were like just talking about Shamu. And actually, like when Dragon was in like the booth next to us. And as soon as he heard Shamu, he, he, he like turned to us and said, <laughs> did, you, did you just say Shamu? <laughs> It was like fucking proper surreal, man. <laughs> and then literally, after that point, we I think we finished the meals and then we both well, me, Paddy and Andrew, who's in the chat there, like Wind Dragon. Mm. We all went to this like kind of like a Burger. Japanese inspired um arcade. 
he probably remembers that. We went like there's like a staircase that goes underground and there's like these it's 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 like proper Japanese arcades actually. It was it was really really cool to see in London. Like even the, the language of the machine was like in, in Japanese. Right, I'm gonna make a point here as well before we sort of progress the story on to the end. Mm -hmm. Phantom Riverstone have done a blog about the differences and similarities to Shenhua's house and the area around it. And actually, okay, there's quite a few bits here that are quite similar. Some bits are different, but it's well worth the read, everybody, if you want to go on for it. And while I'm mentioning community groups, I'm going to mention this again because I went on a bit of a, not a tirade, but a bit of a push, shall we say, of hashtag let's get Shenmue 4 fourth of the month every month hashtag let's get Shenmue 4 the dojo are involved the 500k are involved PRS are involved Shenmue Forever uh, Shenmue DE Shenmue Master Sega Saturno um, it's uh, crazy really, when, you, when you name it all the groups I'm just reading off group I've probably missed somebody and someone's going to message me on Facebook later and get really upset Shenmue Differences um, there's Shemmy hundreds Futos. of them now and we just need to if we want Shenmue 4, and I, and I said this earlier in the stream, if we want Shenmue 4, get on Twitter. Make it bloody known, everybody, that we want I know it. I'm a little bit behind there. That's get, the, the Shenmue house thing. I'm it a little is. Bit behind. Read, read, that, read that post, everybody, because it's really good. Um, DSRF, yes, it does need to be a collaborative project. We need everybody needs to get behind it. Everybody needs to get involved, and everybody needs to make it happen. I think we're in a good position with Shenmue because we're getting an anime, we're getting lots of merch, and all the rest of it. But let yeah. let's not stop. Let's not rest on our laurels here. Push it. Because if we rest on our laurels, it won't happen. But if we stay vocal, if we stay involved, if we keep pushing it, it will happen. Shenmue Three is proof of that. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of telltale signs that are pointing, you know, positively for Shemmy 4. Please wait a little longer. Just from your like your interviews alone, Matt, just some of the people you've spoken to, you, spe you know, Let's especially Cedric, who's yeah. integral to you know the series going forth. <laughs> you know, just them talking about the fact that they're supposedly pitching it to different publishers and stuff. That proves that Shemu 4 must be in the works, you know, they, something must be going on behind are, the scenes. They are working on it, and I'm going to make the point here Shemu of saying, how yes. are the lights being kept on at Wisenet? Like? Now, they could it be working on other key. projects, don't get me wrong, mm. because they are a game development okay. studio, they could be working when on different projects, cave, but something has to be keeping them alive, and keeping people got to think. I mean, He's got a team there now, he's got a team of 40 people there now. And that's what Ryan Payton said to me in an interview previously. Yes, so if there's a team there, there, how are they paying them? I don't really know what that yeah. is. Something has well, to be happening. I mean, You've got to think, was it maybe four years ago now, I'd say? It was um, yes, so, not, not E3, it wasn't E3, but there was You're, another game show that was... What is it? I don't know. It wasn't Reboot, because that's where you could have a speech on it, but... He did a thing where he was at a booth, where he was like showing off a VR game, yeah. And for all we know, that could be a Wisenet game, you know, a Wisenet developed VR game. Um, do you remember that one? What was that called? That VR game. VR, VR Ursus. It's like a play on Versus, wasn't it? Versus, yeah. Um, oh, I'd say I'd be able to find it. I don't know. But Yusuzuki was there, and he was like. Demoing an early build of this versus game he was creating, this, this VR game. So, like, like you said, there, Matt, the you know, they could be working on other projects besides Shenmue. Uh, for all we know, you know, they could have the fundamental elements of Shenmue 4 created. You know, Cedric was saying that they're pitching Shenmue 4 to publishers. So, they could have a chunk of Shenmue 4. We should go ask that's your father. demoable, you know, to these there. publishers. Yes. But then in the meantime, they've got to be doing something, like you said, to, to keep the lights on. They've got to be doing something that's beneficial to the, the company. Yeah. You know, Yu Suzuki's team there, WiseNet, it's not Shamu 
create every Sam Shamu game in the series net. You know, it's Yu Suzuki net. You know, could, they could be working on different things, different projects. It could Here's be, exactly. We, we just don't know, do we? I mean, it. they're a game development studio. Yeah. They're going to have to have other things going on. I'm just looking yeah. at the chat again very quickly. Uh, JV Biohazard 1990. It's welcome. Different. I don't Again, another new name that I haven't seen before, so welcome yeah, to the Dojo streams. Um, as someone who wasn't, awesome, wasn't thrilled yeah. with the way Shenmue 3 turned out, I'd still back Shenmue 4 if need be. feel like I'm committed to the end now. The do you know what? Do you know what? I think that we are committed to the end. We are Shenmue fans, and... Did something happen? We, James and I have talked I about the, the good things that Shenmue 3 have done and the bad thing, you know, not the bad things, but the shortcomings. And do you know yeah. what? Isn't right. If we yeah, can't discuss these on honestly, what's the point? Right. But I, what I would always say, and I go back to my first interview with Ryan Payton that I did, bloody hell, it's October 2020. It's being respectful, yep. it's being constructive, and it's, and it's just to say, look, you did X, Y, Z really well, but X, you know, 1, 2, 3 need to improve. See, that's the thing, Mark. You said good things and bad things, but then you stopped yourself from saying bad things because the bad things aren't actually bad, Ollie. You know what I mean? We've got good things, very positive things from Shemu 3, but there isn't actually any bad things from Shemu 3. There's like things that, yeah, you could be disappointed in, the lack of story, but like other people said, the gameplay and everything else, the conversations and stuff felt very Shemu. So it's not actually a bad thing as such. That there was a lack of story it's just a, you know a disappointing thing as a, as a fan you were hoping to find out more about the mirrors to find out more about chamfo to find out more about a, a parents for example but the fact that you didn't get that doesn't make shamu 3 a bad game doesn't make it a fucking one out of ten game or whatever some people would you know make make out to believe because we don't know what's going to happen in the story you know shamu 4 could come along and answer those questions that you were expecting to see in Shemu 3 that made it a disappointing game rather than a bad game. Yeah, and it's being fair, isn't it, in any criticism? I mean, I do think 15, 20 years of expectation is always going to have a weight. It really is, and I can understand that feeling. I really can. Because, and this is me being honest, when I finished Shenmue 3, I thought... I enjoyed the game, but there could have been more story. You know, they, they didn't flesh things out enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's it's how, it's how things push on from here, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's how I how bring him food here. things go. On. Now, I'm, I, this is something I've Father! said on the forums. This is something I've said in in the staff Father! chat for the dojo. My personal feeling is, if Shenmue Four doesn't nail the story top notch while building on the systems of Shenmue is. Three and polishing those he off, then I think we're I in come. trouble. And that's me being honest mm. with everybody here. If if Shenmue 4 doesn't progress the story enough, then I really do think we've got a problem. But if it does, and does what Shenmue 2 did for Shenmue 1, I'm telling you now, we will have a fantastic game on our... on our hands. We really, really will. And it's... unfortunate that... The thing is, they've kind of bought themselves a couple of years so Shenmue 3 came out in 2019 Father! and then, you know, as fans and as game players Father! we're kind of still satisfied up until a point, a certain point where there. are we, you know, May coming up to June 2021 you? you know, you don't expect to see Shenmue yeah. 4 There's a door beyond here. from this point going forward I, I wouldn't expect to see it for another three to four this years way. perhaps, you know what I mean so they kind of bought themselves a couple of years in terms of being able to to start work on the next game if they wanted to um i mean obviously shemu one to shemu two was a year two years at most apart mm -hmm. i think as as pal pal buyers uk buyers we got shemu one was it like i think it came out october or november yeah or something and we got we got the release around december 2020 so you've had exactly. less. You've had less than a year now. Bearing in mind, Shenmue one and two were developed almost in coalition to each other. What's to say yeah, that Shenmue exactly. three and four haven't been done that way? So they've got a yeah. good sort of bank of Shenmue four it's stuff that they can <laughs> work on and improve and so just carried on working. Yeah, we carried on working know. since 2019. For all we know, you know, they could could have had two years under the belt already, nearly. Maybe. Um, He's in here. But like like I was saying there. As, as fans and as players and as gamers these days, we 
I mean, I wouldn't expect to see Shenmue 4 for another at least three years. So, in, in terms of Shenmue 1 to 2 and Shenmue 3 to 4, you know, they've kind of bought themselves a couple of years straight away. And I'm going to pick up on what Lightwing Dragon is saying. If they can improve a lot, then maybe another will go. The basis is there. The systems are there. It's how they use them. And it comes back comes back to a Jet Set Radio uh, 83, like three years, yikes. Three years. We waited 20 years. Come on, three years is nothing. Yeah, 20 years <laughs> is nothing, is it? Two years. To me, like at least a, a year and a half is thrown you know, flown by. Um, I mean, I'm going to... I'll pick on... They could, they, they could do stuff yeah. like that, like G, GV Biohazard. You know, perhaps there's... We, we don't know what the deal was with Sony. We don't know what the deal was with Epic. No, we don't. You know, there could have been a two-year deal. So, you know, and we've got the limited run games, don't forget. Collector's Edition, Complete Edition, whatever. That's not even been released yet, so... It's funny, it has three mo it's I mean, much... I mean, going life... <laughs> As, as someone like myself, I'm I'm 34. I've been, you know, time now is is flying. So perhaps when I was like 12, and Shemu 2 came out, or Shemu 1 came out when I was 12, and Shemu 2 came out when I was 13, you know, that could have felt like five years at that age. But now I'm 34. Shemu 3 to Shemu 4. If it, if there's a five year gap between games, that's that feels like the same right time to me. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so I think we've kind of we've got we've got age on our side, haven't we? <laughs> it's not unheard of either for for games to have sort of three, four the years, games, five yeah. years gap. I think Father's writing. Uh, what by I mean, look at fucking GTA five we're on about Oh come on, it's yeah. That's successful. Mate, it's Did say it got a budget of two hundred and sixty five million there. I bet they must have made a billion by now. Oh they they they've smashed that. I can't remember you know what I mean? the figures, but, but they're not they're not that. they're not chomp they're not chomping at the bit to make a GTA six. In fact we haven't even we haven't even heard an announcement of GTA six. No. Have we? No. I'm gonna pick a what I mean? So like you're saying there, the, the, the time between games is a lot more than it used to be. I'm gonna pick a what Biohazard's saying actually around Shenmue three being released on Xbox. I I agree with you. I think you know, it, 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 for potential of getting a few more sales here and there, absolutely. When I interviewed Cedric, he was talking about the deal, and I, I suspect there's 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 a time limit on it. So, <laughs> I've just seen your comment, James. Um, well, I'm just laughing at this planet has way too much going yeah, on for three years. Yeah, it's true. Do you know what I mean? By the time COVID's gone and all that sort of stuff, it's a, it's a flash in the pan, really, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And going back to what Biohazard is saying, there's a lot gone on. There's also Shenmue 3 on Xbox. I mean, Sony... I'll, I'll go back to what... They, my, they went to Microsoft. You, why isn't it? Why went to Microsoft and said, can we put Shenmue 3 on Xbox as an exclusive? And they said no. Now, I'm not going to get into console wars and exclusive on Xboxes and all the rest of it, but Sony turned around. I think, I mean, bear in mind Yu Suzuki is good friends with Mark Cherney, who is obviously one of the lead architects for the PlayStations. Yeah. But Sony took a risk on it. Now, it was beneficial to them because, you know, come on, they announced Shenmue 3 at E3. It's massive. <laughs> It's massive. That, take out Final Fantasy and Last Guard in E3 2015. Shenmue 3 on its own is huge. That that was that a, thing, it was a meme. The whole game was a meme. That, well, that drop in after those first two that, that sealed the deal, didn't it? Do you know what I mean? I, I I don't think even as many people would be saying talking about that E3 as much if it wasn't for the third major announcement of Shenmue 3 or whatever. You know, along with Final Fantasy Remake and Last Guardian and stuff, Shenmue 3 really emphasised how special that year was. It was, it did, and I don't know, it, it just showed that anything can happen. It really, really did. And I know it was beneficial to Sony, and this is. it made it made it look. You know, they still, they still did a favour though, didn't they, for Yu Suzuki? I still massive. think. I still think the behind the scenes support. they probably got numbers, yeah. they probably got sales figures and, and revenue um, targets, estimates, or whatever. I still think they thought, you know, 
Xiaomi 3 isn't going to generate us a massive amount of profit, but this is Yu Suzuki, this is Shenmue, this is like the most requested sequel in the history of video gaming. Even if it doesn't make a profit at all, the fact that this is being announced at E3, the fact that this is going to generate a bit of buzz for Sony and PS4 at the time, I think that was more than enough for them to say, yeah, let's let's you know let's let's give it a chance, let's give it a go. Even if it makes us no money at all, I think the fact that they could see the potential of that blowing up headlines, giving it a you. legend in the video game history, Yu Suzuki, another chance. And and the, yeah, like you were about to say that it broke, it broke Guinness World Rec Records. It broke the internet. It broke the internet. You know, more so than Buddy Kim Kardashian's arsehole. You know what I mean? It, it really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was. A little bit there. The stream tent just dropped out. It still says. Hang on. Let me refresh again. Yeah. It still says we will be back soon. If I refresh the stream, I'm live according to. Hang on, I'll pause this for a second. Okay, no, no, you're back, you're back live now. Sorry, yeah, guys. it must, must have been my internet just dropped. Sorry, everybody. Apologies for that. Just my, give it a second. My internet. We are back. My, my internet obviously decided that it had enough. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I was watching the stream, so I, I kind of stopped talking as soon as I saw it wasn't really working, so. Shenmue 3 is a solid game, especially if we take into account that it is a kickstarted game. Just compare it with the AAA flops that have come out like Anthem, Cyg Cyberpunk, Fallout 76, Mass Effect, Andromeda. I didn't see the media talking about that. I mean, Cyberpunk, I mean that's true. I, I, Cyberpunk took a battery, we got, we got didn't a couple, it? got a couple of little things. I know people were making fun of Mass Effect, Andromeda. Was it the eyes or something? Oh there yeah, something... The, the dead eyes that were, yeah. Dead eyes, but I mean, like Sergi Ness yeah. says, there, like yeah. games like Anthem, they were kind of given a free pass almost, weren't they? I mean, I know no one's really playing Anthem or speaking of it ever again, but it didn't get a battering that Shamu seemed to get. No, I know. I... Cyber, even Cyberpunk, uh, Cyberpunk, it got like mixed reviews, but it didn't get the battering. I don't think that what, Shamu got. What I find really funny with, with the gaming industry as a whole is you look at CD Projekt Red, you yeah. look at all these developers who have worked in the industry for a long time. They hear the name Yu Suzuki, AM2, Sega. Instant respect. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. that gamers and I don't want to I don't want to generalise gamers everywhere because that's unfair. But there are a certain body of gamers who don't understand how innovative wise net Yu Suzuki and Sega were, and the same goes for Nintendo as well. Let's be honest, that just how well, innovative they were, and what is it, the reason we have the games now that we do is because of them. Is it rose tinted glasses, man? But you looking at the scene now, does this not look incredible? Even for 22 years or whatever it is now, I see people commenting on how dated the graphics work look, and like you know. I, I, I can't see it. I know I know they don't look unreal four or five spectacular, but for a twenty two year old game, if you if you show me another twenty two year old game, it doesn't look like this. Bear in it mind, looks like this is this is the year two thousand, two thousand and one, isn't it? This is ridiculous. They got this running on a bloody dreamcast. Oh, like you dreamcast early on well right right at the start of the at the stream, you got the sky. Just the sky the the dark clouds, the purple, the orange. It's so detailed. Dragon. The same as the mirrors. I, I would, I, I, and I will argue this. There are not many games that have got the amount of detail that the Shenmue series, even Shenmue 3, which I know divides opinion, the amount of detail and the accuracy these games have. From a distant land in the east. And it's from across the crazy sea, he shall appear. that I think he does not know that the there's a lack of respect. I know Shenmue 3 divides opinion, and it rightly does for the story, and I will hold my hands up to that. But Yu Suzuki as a whole, as a pioneering gaming, does not get the respect he deserves from the wider gaming audiences. He really and this, doesn't. This, la this lack of respect came even before the game was released. Yeah, so this, this was years ago. Of, 
Yeah, yeah regardless of how well the game performed, you know, it could have been a 10 out of 10 game for anyone else was concerned, it was still, you know, not giving Yu Suzuki respect, not giving um, the early footage that the Kickstarter back backers that were promised, do you know what I mean? When Kickstarter backers bought into the Kickstarter, they were promised behind the scenes making of throughout the process footage. You're going to get shit looking footage because they've only just started. You're going to get character models that are dead eyed because they haven't actually put the motion capture into play. You know, they haven't actually built the engine. You know, they've only just started and people were making fun of shit that was like four years old at the time, <laughs> I mean, which is crazy. I mean, you also have to flip that a little bit and consider the the, um, the teaser trailer that we got. I think it was was it 2017. I'm, my my head might be off slightly. I think it was. Is that Where, the dead eyes with one? the dead eyes yeah. stuff? That yeah. Maybe they shouldn't have released that stuff. I I I, I don't know. I mean, it would have come out anyway because. I think it would have if if they'd only released it to Kickstarter backers. It would have still it, said, "Look it, at the look at the progress." Yeah. You know, it's shit. Can't it, think. It'd have come out anyway, wouldn't it? But I just wonder whether they should have turned around and gone, "We're not going to release it." But then, because of the Kickstarter nature of the project, they had to. Whereas with Shenmue Four, they don't have that pressure. They can literally go. Yeah, they, they don't have the Kickstarter backers. And I can literally All go, that sort of stuff to here's Shenmue to. 4, we're announcing it, it's happening, and then they can go on a massive marketing campaign six to nine months before it's released and show the game almost mm. almost finished. So you're not seeing that stuff before. Now, I'm really interested in here that you go, stuff. Man. Writers, here you go, writers, there's six, uh, six people there, yeah. writers. Now, you can bet there's what, but probably about 200 odd people have worked on Shenmue 1 and 2. It's down to about 40 or 50. But what's the script data manager Shin Ishikawa? It's, they're, they're, it's in a, they're in a tough spot, aren't they? With the budget they've got, and bearing in mind Shenmue Three is niche, Shenmue is niche as a product. So and the, the problem is, man, Shenmue One and Two are the benchmark as well. They are. So you've got the two the two greatest games of all time as the benchmark mm -hmm. to create. A new game and they haven't got the budget and the team to compare really have the at the end of the day so what we did get with Shenmue 3 was mind-blowing in itself really that a team of we're led to believe like 30 people in a budget of like a tenth of the original budget created the third game and you know the third game is as good as we got which I think it's still amazing. You know, it's not revolutionary, but to be fair, they don't have to create something that is better than every other game. Like, you know, back in the day, the Dreamcast, this Shemu series was supposed to be like the most revolutionary game of all time to, to compete with Final Fantasy at the time. You know, Shemu 3 has kind of got the it doesn't need to compete to anything, it just needs to create the next game that we've all been waiting for, but you know, that's not, not enough for some people, is it really? It's, it's, it, they, they were always in a tough spot, they really were, and I don't want to diminish shortcomings of Shenmue 3, because that would be unfair, because whether you liked Shenmue 3 or you disliked it, we can all agree that the story element of the game was not strong enough, the characters mm. were not fleshed out enough, for one, yeah, I'm just being honest here, but when you consider all the external factors that have gone into even getting this bloody game off the ground, the fact it exists in the way that it does, and I'm going to quote Warren Payton here, and he'll probably shoot me, is is <laughs> is um it is a bloody miracle that the game even exists in the quality that it does. Bearing in mind that you've got games that release these days with bugs everywhere, they're a mess, you know. I know Shenmue 3 is rough around the edges, but you can't say it's buggy. It works. I, did it's, anyone get a crashed game? I, don't, I, I never really um, heard about anyone's game only, just crashing only randomly. Only because I or... was messing around with Unreal. Mm, what, on the PC? Yeah. I'd, honestly, I, I don't think anyone... Did anyone start Shenmue 4? You know, you got No Man's Sky and 
that's starting to get a good reputation again just because good game, they've actually. had another five years. Yeah, it's a good good game, and it was a good game at the time, to be honest, when it first released, but, I mean, they've had five years of non-stop development to create it into an even better game, whereas Shenmue 3 is a single-player game, you know, it's been released, um, you know, the focus has switched to, hopefully, Shenmue 4. Um, they don't need to continue to patch, develop Shenmue 3. So what we did get with Shenmue 3, I, what I was about to say, you know, it's... It's not a buggy game as such, is it? It's not yeah, no, crashing it's not. every second. No, like I say, I don't think any, anyone's game crashed as far as I'm aware. No, it's not. And we could still be waiting for Shenmue 3. As JS um, RF is saying, we could still be waiting. Or we might be waiting for Shenmue 4. But yeah, the fact that Shenmue 3 even exists is a miracle. The fact that we are talking about the potential of a Shenmue 4 is a bloody miracle. The fact and we we're getting an anime? Yeah. What the fuck? The, the, the fact we're <laughs> having an anime is a miracle. Yeah. The fact that Sega are producing videos to try and get people into the series is a miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle. The fact we are and getting... duck toy. The duck toy is amazing. The fact <laughs> that we are getting um, merchandise is a miracle. Sergi Ness mm. saying this best here. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Bailu is solid. It's, yeah. it's nailed on. You can tell the end of 3 is rushed, because they ran out yeah. of time, and they obviously pushed to get it out. We know, Cedric has talked about this publicly on two or three occasions, that the ending has been changed to get it out. Well, you can tell that they rushed the ending, because Major. we were meant to get by ship. We were, get to, we were meant to get to buy ship, weren't we? Um, we spoke about it in episode 2 of the podcast, where... We were looking through the Kickstarter, and literally the first thing is Baisha Village, or you know. And they talk a lot about Baisha Village in that, and, yeah. and, and the way how get, integral it is to the game. That graphic where it was like the three locations you're going to go. It's Baisha. What was it? Baisha, Chobu, Bai Bailu, or something. Yeah, you know, in that was, order. Yeah, they were there, weren't so they? So a lot, the... a lot of what they were planning was Baisha. From the get-go, they were going to say. Uh, Eight million or whatever, we were gonna get the infiltration mission or something that was Baisha related. We got the early footage of them working on the, the Tulu buildings, the the circular buildings that was Baisha related. So I mean, they had a lot of stuff planned, and it's 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 obvious, painfully obvious to see that they just ran out of time and and budget, and they had to kind of backtrack themselves a little bit, and you know put a you draw a line underneath what they got to at that point. Otherwise, like um, Jet Set Radio guy was saying, it, we could still be waiting for the game otherwise. You know, if if Yu Suzuki had an endless pot of money and the publishers and whoever that was waiting on the game was saying like, yeah, just you know, carry on, Bill. You know what got by she didn't finish yet, mate. Just carry on. Mm -hmm. You know, carry on. Here's another couple of mil. Finish by Shroff. You could still be waiting for it yeah, right now. It could be. We... I've just, and if you go back to the original Kickstarter, I think they had a deadline of 2017. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. I've just seen Spaghetti popped up in, <laughs> in the chat. Oh, nice, Spag. nice to see you. You've caught, you've caught the end. I mean, we're, we're just having a bit of a chat as we round things off. But yeah, um, good to We've see We've not really you. talked about the game. <laughs> well, we have talked about the game, but not... I mean, Matt's played the whole... Guilin chapter, I've, I've barely paid attention to the game on the screen. <laughs> I've just been what deep I would, in conversation about other stuff, which is cool. What I would say, and I, I've said this several times through the stream, is quite simply Shenmue 3, I think, was always going to struggle to meet the expectations of everybody considering the budget it had, considering the constraints it had. We need to see what Shenmue 4 is going to be like. And if Shenmue 4 doesn't nail the story, doesn't push on the way that we hope it does, then I think we'd all be in agree agreeing here that actually we're in trouble. Look, we won't see a Shenmue 5. But what we need to do is get behind Shenmue 4. We need to get behind it on social media. We need to be pushing that element. And that's without taking into account the modding community. We've got the Dragon and Phoenix project going on at the moment, which Lemon Hayes and his team are working on to get Shenmue 1 and 2 into Unreal. Yeah, we're not taking into account 
Sega's merchandise. We're not taking into account that we've got limited run games pulling merchandise left, right, and center for Shenmue Three as well. We yeah. don't know. We don't know what's going behind the scenes. We don't know what's going on. WiseNet are clearly doing something to keep the lights on. So, well, not just that, but like the anime as well. When that's released, could we be introducing a whole new fan base to the series? We could. You know, Yu Suzuki, Yu Suzuki doesn't know what's in store really yet. Like you're saying with the, the merchandise and limited run games, all these factors and elements and stuff, they're just bringing fans in. Maybe not every single day. I don't know if we're getting a fan a day, but any particular fan that c- jumps into Shemu, tries it out, maybe it's games with gold this month or something, you know what I mean? You get Shemu 1 and 2, they try that, jump into 3. Any particular new fan that we actually introduce to Shemu, whether it's the anime that's coming up, mm-hmm is an extra fan that's going to contribute to Shenmue 4. And like you're saying there, man, you don't know what's in store for Shenmue 4. We don't know if the anime is going to play a major role into Shenmue 4 now. Say if there is another three-year development cycle for Shenmue 4, we might get an announcement, we might get a trailer, but um, you know, perhaps we won't see the game until, what is it, 2021? So 2024, Maybe I don't know. Possibly. Maybe we'll see Shenmue 4, possibly. But by that point... Perhaps the anime has done a couple of years, done the rounds. Perhaps it's caught up to Shenmue 3. You know, perhaps Yu Suzuki says to Chikara Sakurai, you know, fucking hell, mate, your, your story for the anime is, you know, top notch. You know, you've introduced these elements that we had with the original series that I don't have anymore because my writers, you know, I've only got one writer. Uh, we used to have a team of six. We've just seen the credits there. Perhaps he could mm-hmm. say to the anime team, do you fancy you know, writing a bit of the the storyline for Shemu 5. Shemu, Shemu, it, 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 no one knows exactly what's going to happen at the moment. So I think to completely disregard the series because of Shemu 3 is a bit of a, you know... It's a bit premature, it's a bit premature the, I think, just disregarding... For what we know, you know, what what we've waited 20-odd years to see people drop, drop off the series and say, like... We saw it earlier today. I, I, what was it, Shemu Channel or something? I don't want to slight people, but they've got a bio saying like Shemu, uh, massive Shemu fan, but Shem, uh, apart from Shemu Three or something. Do you know what I mean? It's like don't give up on the series just because Shemu Three wasn't what we worked up in our heads over the last twenty years. I mean, we've all had our own opinions on what Shemu Three was going to be like, especially if it was on the Dreamcast. We've all had that time, that 15-year span, that 20-year span or whatever, to th- to think up how we think the series is going to go and then when it doesn't go that way, you know, disappointed. If you, you kind of built unreal expectations. I mean, I know I had. I, I built unreal expectations for the game and then when you actually step back, and especially the second time I played through Shenmue 3, I actually picked up on a lot more stuff that I didn't see in the first time. And especially talking to you, Matt, about the series and episode four, when we talked about the story elements, we discovered a few things that Shemu 3 actually did retain that perhaps you didn't notice because you've got this one mind track of over expectations and, you know, all you're thinking of like is why have they copied and pasted the the boss battle from the end of Bailu into the end of Niawu? Why are we uh, trying to get another 500 yuan to buy a move scroll you know what i mean these these are a couple of things there that probably detract from some of the good things that shemmy 3 actually brings to the table it, uh, yeah exactly i think you've summed that up quite perfectly and we don't we can't judge shenmue 3 without shenmue 4 i mean if shenmue 3 was the end of the series and another get and a game was never made again then i can understand people's disappointment but i wouldn't ever i mean i I I, my, I watch Game of Thrones all the way through from 1 to 8, season 1 to 8, and I know the, the end of Game of Thrones is not great. But I don't look back at the whole series and go, oh, that's terrible. 95%, yeah, the last <laughs> 95% of Game of Thrones is quality. Insane. Let's, let's give Shenmue 3 the same break. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Let's not forget its shortcomings. Let's not forget it's not quite heavy on the story that we wanted. Let's not forget it's rough around the edges. And let's not forget that we need to communicate the change, the things that they can improve on. 
But let's also not forget to communicate the things they did really, really well and the things we've talked about in the stream tonight in terms of the continuity that is there. Because if we, you can't, if you focus on the negative the whole time, what's the fucking point? What's the point? And I'd, I'd argue, actually, like you comparing it to the Game of Thrones, like 95% of Game of Thrones is amazing. It's only that last season or the last few episodes that spoils it. I'd argue that we've had the same for Shamu. Yeah, we have. You know, Shamu we, have 3. we have. Ninety-five percent of the game is brilliant. It's just that five percent that's made people because we're expecting a masterpiece of a game, and like I said before, the budget and the team size is not going to be able to create a Shamu two in twenty twenty one as much as we want them to. They've got 95% of it right, which I salute them for, because they've, 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 they've maintained the gameplay, um, the conversation aspects. It feels like a Shemu game. The environments, Bailu Village is beautiful. Even now, Niawu's beautiful. It's just, when they get to that final 5% of taking the player through the story elements, it, it, it's the story at the end of the day that's is, is, is the limitation really for Shamu 3 and I just think it's it's a crime really to to dwell on those limitations for the rest of the series you know for for, for what we've had prior to those limitations I just think you should back you Suzuki back the team be behind the, the project that they're trying to create he's brought it back from the kindness of his own heart really you know he could have just said you know it's been 15 years, guys. I'm going to focus on Outrun Three. You know what I mean? He, he could have he could have took one of his other older, older games and focused on that, but because he knows how special Shemu Three uh, Shemu is, how much it means to his fans. Um, you know, he said before how everyone always comes up to him and says, you know, what about Shemu Three? You know, when we're going to see Shemu Three? He knows everyone wants Shemu Three. So he's tried his fucking. He's he's worked his ass off to give us a Shemu Three, and then for a certain fan base a certain personnel to turn around and throw it back in his face and say, you know, fucking Shemin 3 shit. You know, you shouldn't have made it. Um, you know, I just think it's it, it's extremely harsh considering what we did get from Shemin 3. And it is a, for me, it's a 9 out of 10 game. That one point is literally the limitations in the story elements that as fans... 15 years wait, the high expectations we had, that was all that was lacking for me. I'd agree. I really sorry would. for swearing. No, I <laughs> thought it were, were perhaps watershed, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to look at the chat very quickly. I mean, um, yeah, sure. JS, um, JSRF8393, um, um, do we have any connections to the team? Not, not, not intrinsically, no. I mean, we... We have some good relationships with people who work there, but quite being quite honest, we don't carry much influence. Mm. We we we're we're public in what we say. We're public in what we want to push in terms of yeah the, the community and the community representation. But at the end of the day, we, we're not involved in the team. We don't work on the team. We we just communicate what we can publicly, and that's yeah. position wise, we're the same as you guys. Yeah, you know, we don't yeah. know. We just, any more than you know we just happen to own you know to be running the dojo at the end of the day and while it's a very privileged position and james and i really enjoy doing it it's mm. it, it, we don't have much more say than anybody else quite frankly i wish um, to be fair i wish we did get some tip-offs and stuff so we could actually prepare yeah <laughs> sometimes so we get news news, news breaks you know, like, like the, oh shit exactly like that the even the, Sh the shamu duck thing we had I no was just idea. scrolling through the Twitter feed. I've got no, no idea. No I was idea. Scrolling through the Twitter feed, I seen a, a a Jets at Radio Beat duck thing, and then it was only really like my brain just noticed that it was a, a Shemu one. Do you know what I mean? For me to to realise, we no one knew that was going to happen. No, no, we had no clue. We had no clue. Macho man, nice to see you. I see you in chat before. I'm a wrestling fan, so I appreciate your comment. Um, Macho man, <laughs> Sergi Nest. If, oh yeah, if they create a collector's edition Shenmue anime. They will sell every copy. Yeah, of course they will. Because Shenmue fans will lap that shit up. We will. Of course we will. Absolutely. Actually, you know, limited run games. What did they do? Did they do like a, a thousand copy limited edition version? It's yeah. sold out, isn't it? Surely, do you know what I mean? 
you could have one to three thousand limit on a product and it'd sell out and spaghetti's making making a point in the chat that obviously the same complaints are rehashed and talked about and it, it goes back to the point we've been making time and time again is that we, we you can't forget the shortcomings of Shenmue 3, but you should make those points yeah. in a respectful manner and also take into account the things that they've done very, very well. Because if you don't do that, I mean, come on. You're just gonna well, be- like Ryan said to you, yeah, as a game developer and whatever, if you're only focusing on the negatives, they don't know what to fix, really. No. You know what I mean? Or they, they don't know what to, to to retain, actually, is what I mean into the next game so if you tell them what was good they know to keep that into the next game so if you said to you suzuki now 95 percent of your game is amazing and you know i really like what you did with you know you you, you kept it the same show me feel uh rio feels the same you, you know the conversations are the same there's a lot of dialogue there i i, I like the voice acting from every single thingy i like that i can speak to the same character again and he's got something different i I like that i can go off do a little bit of a story come back to that same character and he's saying something different those are the things that they want to know that they did well to carry on to a show before and if you only focus on the negatives they might think that everything they did was shit so they try and then change everything even the good things because you didn't mention the good things I think Ryan said that. Yeah, Ryan did say that because at the end of the day, there are positives and negatives. There just is. There just is. And it's, it is a difficult spot for Shenmue because they're not going to get the budgets. They're not going to get the money that I think WiseNet would even want to, to give it to give it what I think users Eki would want to do in terms of innovation as well as pushing the story on. But mm-hmm. what I think we have to be respectful of is what they've done well what they haven't done well communicate those in an effective way and just get behind it get behind a Shenmue 4 and if Shenmue 4 doesn't provide the story that we all want then I think then I do think the series is going to struggle to make a fifth game it really really will so it's it's a, it's a tough ask and I wouldn't want to be Yu Suzuki making it because <laughs> there's this expect that there is a weight of expectation with Shenmue that, that, that goes with it yeah, Spaghetti said it right. Constructive criticism is better than just screaming into the void. It is. Yeah. Balance that's, it. That's what we tr- we're trying to do, really, at the end of the day. We're not trying to say, you know, we're not trying to gloss over the, the negatives. We're just trying to present the negatives in, you know, like a constructive feedback criticism, you know. You want to, say, if you go on Amazon and you're looking at products, you don't want someone to give it a one star just because the delivery of the postage was shit, you know what I mean? Like, Royal Mail never showed up kind of thing, and then they just give the product to one star. That doesn't make any sense because it's not the product's fault that it was never delivered. You know, if if Shemu 4, uh, Shemu 3, sorry, didn't deliver on something, it's not the game's fault that it didn't deliver on something. So you automatically give it a one star because it did, didn't deliver something you were expecting. Think about what it did give you, and instead of giving it a one star, I'll give it a four star and say, I would have given it a five star, but because, you know, something wasn't in it that I was expecting. And then the team knows then, okay, there was four stars are good. It wasn't a one star product, you know, which means it's like the lowest of the low, the worst thing they could have made. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's <laughs> the, 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 they did make a good game, but they then know what, they should have done differently, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly that. I'm just looking at the chat again before we round off. I mean, Mr. Starwalker is saying on YouTube, good to see you again. Another name that I haven't seen in with us before, so welcome. You've come, in, come in at the end of the stream. There are many positives from mm-hmm. Shenmue 3, and they've done a good job of what they had, absolutely. And Spaghetti again is talking about the size of the challenge, the new team starting. This is where Shenmue 4 can build on that. They've got the core yeah. systems. They've got the elements there. It's all there. Now, if they make a mistake with Shenmue 4 and it doesn't do what we hope it does, I think then I can yeah. go, okay, I'll hold my hands up. But let's give the guys yeah. the opportunity. Let's get behind it. One game does not make a series. One episode does not make a TV series. Let's get behind it. Let's let's push this point that we want a fourth Shenmue game. And let and let, let 
let Yuzuki do what he can with what he's got. Because if they do knock it out of the park like Shenmue 2 did with Shenmue 1, we'll, we, we won't be having this conversation ever again. We'll be sat there going, do you know what, Shenmue 3, it was necessary to get us to where we mm-hmm. are now. And that is the point. Take out the anime, take everything else that's going on behind the scenes in terms of merchandise and everything else. I really, really do think that we are in a good place, but we can't rest on our laurels. So if we rest on our laurels, we will not see a fourth game. No, that's spot on. That is, you know, that if 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 people say, you know, that that is the bridge between games that that Shemu three to Shemu four, and you know, like you're saying, they they can build on that. I think they've already proven that with you know the awesome Japan debacle or whatever. We've seen that people like Joel over the the five or six year span, he's grown. As a person, he's, he's he's grown to be more professional. We've seen the way he's answering people's questions. Um, you know, he, he's got he's got more of a professional aspect about him. And I think there's certain things like that. There's already um, like an inkling to the the direction that the series is going in. You know, Shemi Three had to be like that. You know, like I say, Yu Suzuki was expecting. To what was the original Kickstarter budget like? Two million. Two million. He was expecting that to be tough. Do you know what I mean? He was expecting. He, he said two million because he didn't even think at the time that two million was achievable. You know, if we got to two million, Shemu Three was going to be a game that you know we don't even know what kind of game it would have been. But I, I, I think a lot of people underestimate the series now. I, I think when Yu Suzuki achieved. 6.7 million, whatever we got on the end. What was it? 7.3 million? Yeah. Did it we was. get the, Seven the point PayPal? Seven. Or am yeah. I making that up? Yeah. Okay. So 7.3 million, 7. Point something million. And then he's got budget from other independent, I don't know, shareholders in the, in the series. Epic Games provided a little bit of that, probably Deep Silver, Epic Games, um, Cop Media, sorry. Um, so I think they really underestimated what was required for Shemu 3 at the start to appease the fans. And then in the end, it was probably too big for what they had, if you know what I mean, like team-wise yeah, 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 yeah. and stuff. I think it was it was too much for them to take on, I think. You know, it, it, it probably it may have turned out better, bizarrely, if we'd have only met 2 million because... Maybe Yu Suzuki would have streamlined what he originally tended to create. I think he said he was quoted as saying like, uh, "Whatever he w- he would be able to just do the story, and then at ten million he'd be able to make the Shemu game that everyone wants, kind of thing." But because it was like, I don't think he ex- ever expected to get to ten million. Maybe he did at the start because of the the Kickstarter, how quickly that took off and breaking world record world records and stuff. Perhaps he then thought, "Oh." You know, crap, if we make 10 million, I can make the Shamu 3 everyone wants. And then it kind of like, you know, what's the word where it like kind of um, subsided around the, yeah. the 6 million, whatever thing he was kind of in the middle. So he, he kind of didn't know how far to take it, but he didn't want to slack, you know, like on the original 2 million plan. So I think I, I think budget maybe didn't help because it was like in that, that sort of mid range. He wanted to create the best thing he could, but he had to like, <laughs> you know, what I mean, he had to to kind of make do with, um, you make, know, making some limitations and stuff. Make, I suppose he had, I don't to, know. he had to make do with what he had. And spaghetti, he's made it, making another good point. That actually, the budget was fluid the exactly. entire time, and it's really tough because you don't. Because Ryan, Ryan Payton said to me that developers call their shots quite early in terms of they know their budget, so they know what they're going to be going mm. for. So to, for the budget to be fluid like that, bearing in mind as well, we know the budget was creaking by the end. It's a tough spot. It really is. But yeah. let, let's yeah. let's not forget the things it did well. Let's not forget the things that could be improved. But let's get behind a fourth game. Hashtag let's get Shenmue 4 at the end of the day. Get behind it. And we will get a fourth game. If you don't get behind it, then we will not get a fourth game. 
simple as that and it is as simple as that it really really is so all i need to say now is because i'm gonna round the stream off because we've been going for nearly four hours yeah <laughs> longest stream well, it's, it's it's hard to, it's hard to like just to justify in in good english i'm trying my best to like say these words and these sort of things to look like because i i love shimmy three i, I don't want to diss on it at all but I want to present my feelings and my, my words in a way that shows that I still appreciated what we got with Shenmue 3, and I'm happy with what we got with Shenmue 3, but I just want them to build upon it, and I don't want to, like, mess my English up, which is why I might have a lot of ers and ors and pauses and stuff. I, I, I want to try and say the right words, and I think, you know, it, it, it's nice to see, like, Retro Godfather and say, you know, all good points, because... I'm sitting here thinking, like, did I just say that right or whatever? And then, you know, people are saying, like, all good points kind of thing. It's, you know, it's, it's what I'm trying to get across. And, you know, it's what we've been trying to get across in the last streams, episodes, or whatever, the podcast kind of thing that, you know, Shenmue 4 can definitely build upon Shenmue 3. Like, you keep saying, Matt, there's, everything's in place. It just needs, it needs to really know what it needs to do now. And that's all, that's all I think Yu Suzuki, he should be aware, based on fan feedback, he should be aware on if he's concentrating on the dojo, some of the other outlets. As long as he's not focusing on all the negatives, because I think that can that can really eat away at you. I mean, say with like some of the stuff I've worked on, Shemi World, some of the negative aspects of that really, really eat away at you more than some of the positives can like make you feel good about what you've done because the negatives kind of outweigh the positives. Um, you know, you could have a hundred positives and only one negative, but it's the negative that kind of like eats away at you. So I'm hoping that you Suzuki doesn't really focus on a lot of the, the negative feedback, a lot of the people saying like, you know, show me three is a bad game kind of thing because we know ultimately it wasn't, it was just a couple of things that, you know, we were hoping they did a different way. <laughs> Spag says, buy the merch, buy the duck. Yeah. Let just... But these are the kind of things that can only help the series. Yeah. I mean, if, 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 if you go show the series, represent the series, I know we're all doing that on the Twitter, especially the fourth of every month, but I think a lot of the, the outlets, I think Sega expect to see a lot of tweets on the fourth of the month. So... If you show them in numbers, like say if a thousand people buy this bloody dock over the course of a couple of days, they're like, oh, you know, I wasn't expecting to see so many purchases for a dock of Rio Hazuki. You know, let, let's 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 test the waters. Let's make a number two. Let's make a Landy dock. Do you know what I mean? Just just tiny little baby steps go a long way, in my opinion. I know I know it's nothing really. It's a bit of merchandise at the end of the day. It's nice to see that. It's nice to see the T-shirts that we've given away in the stream. Matt's given away a Shemi 1 and 2 sh shirt that Sega sh shot, sampled or trialled, you know, a couple of years ago. You know, I think I think they were surprised, actually, back then that all their stock sort of sold out. You got the mug. What did we have back then? We had the mug, the medallion. The did we have a shirt, a hoodie? We had, the t yeah. we had two T-shirts and a hoodie on top of it, and they all sold out within minutes. All sold out. So I think those little things, I know they might not mean much in the grand scheme of things, but if Sega thinking like, crap, you know, I know we only made like 500 shirts, but they did sell out in a couple of days. It's It's got to be more in the thoughts than some other franchises, is what I mean. So like, say, they've tried a, I think I've got a shelf here, they've, they've got a Super Monkey Ball game here. How many copies did that sell? Even I haven't seen any Super Monkey Ball merchandise on the Sega shop. You know? That literally could be how simple it is. Shemu selling copies of a game. Shemu selling a duck. Shemu selling a t-shirt. Whereas we put this Monkey Ball game out and it didn't really sell. You know what I mean? So, so Shemu could be higher up than Super Monkey Ball at this point in time. Do you know what I mean? It's it's those daft numbers that might not mean anything on the grand scheme of things, but to Sega, 
and sales wise, statistics wise, I think as a franchise, we are actually doing better than a lot of other things that they are. We are. We are. I don't know. We are. I mean, we've been lucky. The water we've been lucky to get a third game, and the fact they're still pumping out merchandise, still pumping out videos, says enough. We just need. We can't let off now. We really, really can't. And speaking of letting off, we are twenty twenty to one in the morning on, <laughs> on a Sunday morning. So I'm gonna quickly say some goodbyes and go through. Go That's through. gone so fast, mate. It has. It's gone really. But I've enjoyed it. To be fair, I'm gonna go through the the, the last bits of the chat. I mean, Spaghetti's making all the points that we've been talking about. Retro Godfather's saying that we, yeah, we both make good points here and they're valid. Mr. Yeah. Star Walker as well. Yeah, and Star Walker was saying, you know, watch a bit of the stream, but loves the dojo podcast and the work you do. Thank you. You know, thank you for dropping in and, and appreciate you taking the time to listen to the podcast, listen to the interviews, listen to everything. Um, Yanni yeah. X, I'm gonna I'm gonna round this off because you did ask earlier. Oh, we've got a new subscriber, Adam Stichal, who's just just subscribed. Oh, um, brilliant, mate! Thank was you. my favourite. Um, was my childhood man. Even com- uh, completed again HD version recently. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, and we've enjoyed tonight. We'll be back in a few. I uh, we'll be back in about four to six weeks, I'd imagine. Um, mm. But take care. I'm just sorry, I waffle on nah, so much. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine because it's it's all it's all valid. It's all good points. Yanni X, just for you and everybody else who's been involved in the streams in the past, I'm going to close things off with a nice saxophone uh, symphony, shall we say. Get your um, saxophones out. Get your saxophones out, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a good rest of your weekend, and we will see you very, very shortly, probably about four to six weeks, if not sooner, and we'll just see how things go. Mm-hmm. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. No